So, um, AMD is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I've seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMD Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry, so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so. Are you going to join the library? Hello, hello and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. How are we all doing? Uh, are we doing good? It's a Sunday and it's a time that we go into the Real Animator Training global Facebook community. Take a look at people's hard work that's going on and um, offer some suggestions um, as to how they can move forward or what they can do to move forward. Um, I have been busy this week doing real animator training stuff, but we'll call it back end stuff um, rather than front end, which is why you haven't been seeing me uh, live streaming. Uh, we'll be getting back to the live streaming pretty soon. Uh, just got a lot of, uh, yeah, back end uh, real animator training stuff to be taken care of. But uh, while I go into the chat, I see we've already had some pretty tempting suggestions uh, from the uh, a few of my uh, friends in the chat but uh, so while I go and say a few hellos to people in the chat if you want to add to those tempting suggestions of uh, characters for me to do a breakdown uh, and give you a few uh, drawing I prefer to call these character breakdowns little kind of drawing tutorials you're getting free drawing tutorials from me every week on how to get better hand-eye coordination how to understand structure and construction not really construction from a character design perspective but more from a hands up hand-eye coordination perspective so if you can suggest those um 
characters for me in the uh, chat and I will take a pick. Uh, so while you're doing that, I will say um, a few hellos to the people in the audience. So we are beginning with Cameron Allen Davidson Black. How are you, sir? Octavio Velasquez. Good to see you. Frilled Mayfly, the adorable Frilled Mayfly. Um, ooh, what about Captain Hook? Uh, I actually did a Captain Hook in an Ask AMB, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't want to do him again. He's one of the amazing Frank Thomas characters that we might want to look at, so I'm not ruling that out. Um, Deruji, how are you doing? Um, Kitchen Cat, the adorable Kitchen Cat. Uh, Tinkerbell, ooh, Tinkerbell. I mean, Tinkerbell, when it comes to the Mark Davis original, uh, yeah, now you're talking my language. But uh, maybe I'll lay off the uh, lay off the beautiful girls for a little while. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of them uh, lately. So um, I'm so happy there's a stream today. You're so cute, Milf Ray, Frilled Mayfly. You really are. Look at that. All in capitals. I'm so glad that uh, my streams are bringing you some happiness. Thumper. Ooh, that's a good one, Diruji. Thumper. Aurora, Briar Lo Rose, uh, Philip from Sleeping Beauty. Those are Briar Rose. Mwah. The Audrey Hepburn of Disney heroines. You ain't going to get much classier than Briar Rose. Sure, there are other ones that I look at and feel a bit more attracted to from other perspectives, but for sheer elegance and class, you're not going to get more beautiful than Briar Rose. That's a good suggestion. Um, we have aerial character breakdown. Oh, I've done a few of them, Mr. Creative World. I know you're not a library member. I even did some animation with Ariel way back in the library. Daisy! There she is with that awesome name, Daisy Deruji, uh, Young. Okay, you guys. Bilal, Bilal, the newcomer. Can you break down Harley Quinn? Maybe not today, Bilal. We've had such awesome suggestions above that Harley Quinn. I'm not. I'm not. Bruce Tim, Shane Glines, they're great draftsmen. I'm not. Don't want to undermine them, but in comparatively to the suggestions we had. Maybe on another day, if I want to do more TV simplistic design, uh, I will. I will do that. I'm not ruling that out. Not ruling that out though. Um, how are you, AMB? Nice to see you. Okay, hey Cape, how are you, Paul? How are you? Did you break down Sebastian? No, I haven't broken Sebastian down ever. Uh, that's a good suggestion. What about King Leonidas from? Bed knobs and broomsticks. Ball, you dark horse. I tell you what, I was gonna do Captain Hook. I kind of made up my mind as I was going down. But that. Move it around, matey. Move it around. I love that char character. Let's break him down. Let's go and do uh, King Leonidas from. Uh, Bed knobs and broomsticks. You got me. You won me over. Okay. So let me change. Let me put the double, double mic on. on. Sorry. For one last time. time. You, you want to hear my Sebastian, Sebastian voice? Oh, you know, you know what? Um, I don't think I've ever done him. I've done, uh, I've done the chef going, no, no, very cuisine, shut on it. It's religious, it's really great. Oh, le poisson, le poisson. How I love le I'm not going to sing the whole thing because I can't. Sebastian. Ariel, the human world. is I've never tried him. I'll have to listen to him again. And then I see the slave away. I don't know. I have to I have to try. Anyway, back onto the drawing. Okay. Okay, so let's Okay, now first I've I'm gonna, gonna look for King Leonidas. Uh bed knobs. Bed knobs broomsticks. King Leonidas. Uh, move it around. Oh, what a character. That's got to be milk. That looks like milk character. <laughs> oh, there's just so many good ones. There's so many good ones to choose from here. Shall we do a full body one? Shall we do a full body one? Unfortunately, they're all little gifts. 
Oh man, I'm gonna want to save one of these. That's such a nice one. The cell, the original cell. I'm gonna save that. Oh yes, what a drawing, man, Paul. You are a badass. Thank you for asking me to break this one down. Okay, so I'm going to save that into the Brave Star folder. Brave Star! Eyes of the Hawk, Ears of the Wolf, Brave Star. Okay, let's do it. Okay, right. Let us. I'm going to be doing. That's awesome, Fro uh, Mayfly. That Chef Louis was a Matt O'Callaghan animator. It was a great character. Ken Anderson design. Yeah, you know your stuff. You look. You you actually look like you could teach me a thing or two about. Uh, you know, John Pomeroy mentioned on my LinkedIn when he saw one of my breakdowns, and he said that wasn't Mel Carl. That was a Cliff Nordberg. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, thanks, John. You you know you you'd know way better than me. You know, so, so there you go. Okay, right. So let me um, let me now. Okay, so now we're onto the drawing. So let's start drawing. Uh, let's start making a nice drawing of the character, uh, King Leonidas from Bedknobs and Broomsticks. I'm gonna enjoy this one so much. Right, let me just make it to a good size. I like to blow up. I saved my images now because when I used to try to draw them off the... Um, how's my mic coming? Yeah, you can hear me. When I used to try to draw them from the Google image search in the small window. It was just too small for me to really see. I'm going to draw in black. Right, so let's start with the usual, you know, triangle. Let's see if we can fit everything in this triangle. Um, so I'm thinking that is his head, okay, is, we're going to just look at the silhouette. So we've got a crown here, okay, and from there I'm going to come out a little bit now because the triangle does extend. This is a bit like the shape we did last week. I forgot who we did last week, but I distinctly remember drawing this shape. So I'm going to come out here like this, and I'm just going to make here and there. Now I'm going to split that up. And I'm going to make rounds here. This is ideal for silhouette drawing because this, although um, Paul told me it was a Ken Anderson design, which rightly so, you know, there's, Disney is so much more than Milk Carl, you know. Um, I'm guilty of just hurrying up and just uh, not wanting to use my brain and say, yeah, Milk Carl or Frank Thomas and, uh, you know, but there were so many like Norm Ferguson, Ken Anderson, Fred Moore, um, you know, Ward Kimball, so many other great, great animators. Mark Davis, of course. Um, right, so now we're going to go up here. Now you see how I'm like cutting into this triangle to b get the negative space there. Let me let me get back into the... Now, so I'm going to look at this, and this is probably going to want to be going on the other side. Now, I'm not necessarily going to stick to my silhouette, okay? But I want to... Every time you come to my streams and watch the way I draw... Um, I want you to be reminded to always think about silhouette and outline, no matter whenever you're making. For me, making drawings of uh, other people's artwork is only worth doing if you want to uh, if you want to learn something. You know, and I, I don't do this for fun. I, I, I get a lot of tremendous amount of fun from it, but I want to learn about shape language. I want to learn about silhouettes, and ultimately. It's always doing this is going to improve hand-eye coordination. And hand-eye coordination is very important to drawing. So I'm coming in here now. These hands that I'm putting in here, I'm looking at like this little kind of square like this. So I'm looking to fill the negative space now, which is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm coming now. I've made a... This is actually going to come up here like this. So I'm coming in here and looking along the center line around here. So I'm looking at shapes within shapes, which, I, which I'm invariably not going to maybe re religiously stick to. So now I'm seeing like there's a triangle in here, okay? But if I bring this down here like this, in line with here, 
sitting on here is going to be we've got the big kind of snout there's so many ways i can tackle this i can tackle this snout as a 3d shape or i can look at a big outline shape coming up here like this and then i can come in along here and maybe round that off if i want to or i can straighten that out and that's where i'm going to kind of sit you see where i make this square is where i'm going to maybe sit his middle line then divide this up like this and bring this up so i'm not i'm not actually i'm just showing you what my inner eye sees if i was going to do a careful controlled long kind of slower uh sit down and draw see i've got the chin too small there so i will have to sort that out when i draw on top of it but i'm kind of mapping uh mapping things in so we've got the eye he's how many eye widths is he one two three four i would say he's five one two three four five i would say he's five eye widths apart so i'm going to do that see i've got a major problem here which i can sort out now i'm going to come straight so can you see how i've now i'm not going to stick to this but what what is a great way of developing your hand eye coordination is by looking at something and building it from the outside in rather than the inside out you know which is because it's particularly with animation and appealing drawings you're always going to want to think and i'm always i know this is a sound like a broken record here um you're always going to want to think about the master shape the main shape of this character right so now let me go in here and start drawing in our guy uh so the eyes are like little triangles okay so we got like a little triangle sitting up here and we're gonna kind of put a kind of capper on that for the eyelid and he's kind of looking up here like this and his crown is his eyebrows aren't really finishing off there because his crown is there but I'm going to go and sit with because I did pay attention to his eye width. So I'm going to go straight in here and know that that eye is kind of in the right place. It's around five widths apart. Now, between here, we're going to have like a cheek coming underneath. And we're going to, I can see that we've got some furrowed uh, nose creases or whatever you want to call them. Now, around here, we're going to have a nice big kind of swooping line which is going to come to where his nose sits in. So then in here, we're going to furrow that and we're going to come out here like this, right? Now the nose is going to come along. Now I was right about this in one asset, but uh, my proportions were off as I was drawing the shape. The nose is going to come and we're going to kind of look for a kind of imaginary center line to that square and think about, you got to think about what's happening here, okay? You got to think about i'll draw the contour in later so you can see i, I can explain this so i'm going to put the nose in i'm gonna, just going to go in here and draw the nose like this and i really need to explain to you some of you might say well that's obvious if you're a little bit more experienced in drawing but if you're not just bear with me and let me fill this in because this is really important the way the, the way if you want to get snouts right on character design and your own drawing um, it's really important to be able to see these things because I see a lot of fairly appealing draftsmen sometimes on social media who just don't know a few things and their drawing with a few tweaks could go from being appealing and oh that's cute to wow that's really nice you know so let me just fill in this snout here because it's uh, it's it's better for me to do a drawing on top in another color to explain all this rather than while I'm doing it because it'll just get a bit messy you know so i'm going to come around here and i'm just going to go in here and fill in this because you already saw me make a kind of like rough guide in yellow okay of uh of what i what i wanted and where it was going to be and yes i was slightly out but you can see wasn't that much out <laughs> okay because i'm here but i'm i'm just that kind of guy where i'm very picky about you know i don't like to get things um things are never going to be perfect but i don't like to get things wrong shall we say okay right so then here no one does okay so here we're going to go out here like that now before i go drawing any anymore i want to explain to you now i said this 
okay I said this and then I said this okay now we're gonna kind of take this here now I'm gonna kind of imagine this kind of thing contouring okay down and then we're gonna go straight okay now I'm gonna kind of imagine this contouring in okay so this is kind of contouring in this is going straight and then this is coming and jutting and contouring out okay and then every this this comes contouring out the side and contour contouring is very very important I'm gonna take away this red for you here this is the one thing I love about storyboard pro so now if we look at this because because I can just I don't have to fart about with layers I can just change my color okay there's a storyboard pro out 20 now version 20 and I'm still using version 5 so while I'm saying the software is good it it ain't that good for me to update it okay I can do what I want to do perfectly with version 5 right now look at this I'm gonna simplify this so you can see just how important contouring of your drawing is we need to bring that out we need to bring that out. see so also frilled mayfly this is something that you need to think about now there's a danger okay I'll tell you that danger in a minute okay while I've done that you're probably especially if you're a beginner and I used to draw like this a lot and those of you who have been following me have seen how my drawing has strengthened over the years um, probably because I've gone back to the milk cow rather than doing it this way I was obsessed with this way and I kind of like could never go beyond to be honest with you because you you, you get obsessed with construction this is good to know but can you see how now I just intuitively do it but you need to know this information so it's like whenever you see me drawing faces like you see me making a flat thing and saying well you just fit the head in here and the nose in here and the mouth here and then the chin sits off the side and then you kind of have this now this would still be flat to somebody who didn't know you might have a little bit of construction but then what you're going to want to think about is, is you're going to want to think about contouring the the brow of the face coming in you know contouring around the eye you know coming out around under the cheeks you know and then the nasal bone contouring out you know and then you know this so this is very very important but I know when I'm explaining this to you it's something that comes with time because you'll go through a phase where you'll just do that and then your drawings will look very stiff and rigid and you'll never be able to get this kind of charming appealing stuff you'll say what well, what's different about me well that's because you'll have you need to learn that but there'll be a time when you'll need to move away from that you know uh, and you know there'll be a time when you have to start trusting in the instinctive power of shapes going back to the way a child would do it but with the knowledge this time if you want to think about it so anyway so I'm gonna come around here like this okay everything is full circle you know you start with you start naively and then you gain all the knowledge and then you go back to the naive mentality because this is purity this is purity and this is scientific okay now it has to be a two it has to be a successful combination of both in order for you to um, to get uh, maximize your potential right anyway let's get back to this so now I'm just gonna draw his crown now what I like about this crown is, is we've kind of got notice how we've got a little curl coming out there to kind of complement the shape but how it all sits in line okay with this negative space here like this the more you start analyzing silhouettes the more your um, your work see this is in line with this the more you'll start to really intuitively uh, improve not only your hand-eye coordination but you will seriously become a better character designer because character design is about 
um, being able to convey a certain character with a certain shape and with a certain represent and shapes represent things like items of clothing or personality or things like that and that's exactly what uh, what character design is using shapes and blocks and lines to represent those things and the more you study uh, from really good designs the shape choices so much as just you know doing fan art and going well I've drawn this piece of this Goku because I love Goku and I've drawn Goku for so many years and I know all about Goku that's not really study that uh, that's that's just pleasuring yourself if you really want to get good at something you want to really be analytical in your study now there's not much I mean I can go do the outline shapes of this 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 character is amazing this is what I love about the loose scratchy style of uh, 60s Disney animation because while I'm doing like these kind of like uh, what I don't know strands of hair okay now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put in let's look for this other I, th this is not really ideal to do like hand-eye coordination copying of this because it's kind of such such an intuitive bu bunching except for the main shapes of it um, now his ear is gonna now I need to think about the anatomy of there. his ear is gonna sit in here up here like this that's a little high okay but that's not really what I'm just gonna hurry this ear up I kind of like got the made it a little bit short but never mind what I like about this is is now what they would never do in an Aladdin, Aladdin or Prince of Egypt or Mermaid is have all these loose strands of hair and I'm looking at an original cell from the movie okay um, because they were so obsessed with this kind of cleanup but those kind of original strands of hair when it was moving they would dance and boil and shake and jitter about um, and later 90s and you know 2000s hand-drawn animation was so scared of that um, and they wanted everything to be so solid that the problem is is when you've got a character with hair and fur that it, it should bounce and jiggle because when you look at real life it 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 gl glistens in the light it moves around it does all move it around you know it does all kinds of things so it's kind of like defeats the purpose anyway so we've got this uh, hair like this and then we've got a little bit of now I've done a I've got a small error here you see I've made this a little bit too long okay in my choices so I could actually I'm just gonna speed things up you never see me do this and but I'm deciding to do it now okay because it's just it'll just speed it up I advise against that so excuse me you naughty boy okay right so let me now continue with this so that's the head so now I'm gonna come here and think about the rest of the body which is now quite simple in its shapes so I'm gonna think about this line here and we're gonna think about moving this uh, characters uh, I don't know what these kings have these kind of like cotton or I don't know fluffy things but he's wearing one of those anyway so that comes around here then we're gonna come straight down and this is gonna be in line with this so I've kind of overshot it a bit because I'm using my construction underneath construction which I said I wasn't going to stick to but that's again the danger of construction then around here he's holding onto his ribbons okay so we're going to divide that like that and we're gonna put two little creases in here and then he's got another kind of little this is coming out this way and his ribbon is coming off down here between his hands but I'll, I'll tell you what I'm gonna draw his hands first and then I'll solve that right now before I do anything else because I can get lost as you can see I'm gonna come in here now the hands remember I made this shape here like this okay so the hands is gonna be a round kind of shape like this as usual it's just a square and we're gonna break into it you know very very simple I've made that middle finger just a little small 
and we're going to come in here like this and we're going to curl that around so you can see how you know just by having a slight change in the in the in the width of this thing so we can break it up and make it look like a hand and we're going to come straight down here and we're going to come down and round like this now this is what will make these hands come to life he's holding his garment between his hands and he's got his metal which is coming in between there like this and this is on this side coming there like this I've kind of that's kind of off on mine but I'm gonna just keep it there like that okay this this thing in the movie he was holding this watch or something I don't know right then around here like this I'm gonna come in here with this hand and we're gonna come in here with this and you can see how these hands which are really if you just isolate them and look at them they're really quite basic and simple but you can see in the right context how just how well they work you know um, just how nicely they work and you know this is extremely simplistic so we've got the thumb coming off here like this and we're going down and what I actually should have really done before doing all of this stuff was is I should have tackled the hands so that if I had if I was drawing this in my sketch pad you'd have seen the drawing would would you'd have seen a, lo, a, a little bit of scribble and scrabble to try and pull things into place here I'm conveniently um, you know able to use the software uh, and rub it out but another thing I recommend to you is if you are serious about improving your drawing um, is working on your hand-eye coordination is not to use the eraser and if you you know to do pen drawing pen and ink drawing or whatever no pencil um, using a sketch pad okay because then you can come in here now it's just a simple case of me just filling in these shapes okay so I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna come down here like this but this is my this is my prescription and I've prescribed it to a lot of people in who like to join the global Facebook community whose work we're going to look at it in a, in a little in a few minutes actually because um, I'm coming to the end of this um, and they I advise them look if you want to get if you want to speed up your drawing process in terms of how well you you're going to be able to draw my 100% advice to you is to move away from the software that doesn't mean never draw in software look do your projects do whatever you need to do for convenience and software but take some time out in the day to practice with a sketch pad and a simple pen you can only have like spend like two dollars on the sketch pad if if need be you know but that's all that's all it is take some time out and i'm just gonna heavy this silhouette so we can see take it back to where we began okay and then what I want you to do is is then you'll notice from not having the luxury to pull and play things and which is why I like to come live I like to test myself one of the reasons I do these breakdowns for a reason is is number of reasons they give me a nice thumbnail for the video it gives you a nice bit of teaching uh, so even if you're not learning from real animator training you're learning from me in the in the drawing things and also what it does is it enables me to sharpen my hand-eye coordination because I'm live and the the stakes are higher if I mess up I look a fool because I've come online and I'm trying to tell you do this do that and it's all not working out anyway right so there we are right so here's the um, here's the outline of the character so we can see that that's the King Leonidas uh, breakdown right now we're gonna go into the growth development and progress group but before I do that I'm just gonna return very quickly um, and just see what who, who else has joined us uh, before we start the um, the reviews um, ba -ba 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 Right, who have we got here?
I can identify animators and their works. Awesome. Uh, SRJV, yes, it was Stromboli last week. Um, Sneak, how are you doing? Hang Bing Hui. Um, Charlie, Charlene has come online. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. Um, yeah, Octavio says <laughs> Um, whenever I try to focus too much on construction, my drawings end up stiff and lifeless. Now I kind of like to do... Here's the thing, though, for old Mayfly, okay? Here's, you know, knowing what I know of you. The problem is, it's early on where you are. You still don't know enough about anatomy. You might know about the bones of the body, but the muscles that create the contours on the on the body um, are very very important, and the insertion points of those muscles, just like you know the insertion point of the jawbone underneath the maxilla, the mandible and the maxilla, and the zygomatic bone in relation to the contour in and out. Um, uh, you know those things, and you're able to interpret them. So, yes, inevitably drawing with construction will result in stiff, lifeless things, but you still must, you can't fudge it. You can't, you'll only get so good as, as what you know, you know, and there's so much that I don't know even now. There's always stuff that you don't know. You think you own the land that you can whatever on of you don't know. You know that Pocahontas song. But so make sure you get at least to the point that you know what you're doing so that when you make simple, swift shapes, those shapes and judgments are intuitively informed, okay, rather than naively informed or misinformed. Because if you make a shape with half the knowledge your your drawing is going to always look like they're kind of there but they're not there okay so it's important to continue your journey but don't don't look at never look at yourself as the finished article and i don't either i know you don't but sometimes when you make statements like that whenever i try to focus too much on construction at the moment you need, I feel you need to get to the point where your construction is stronger, but it will always look stiff with construction. That's true. And it will always look generic. But you've got to get to that level first. Um, it depends what you want to do, though. I mean, if you want to be illustrative for the rest of your life and do your own thing and you establish a name for yourself, fine. But if you want to get to a certain level, then that's what I'm talking about. Um, okay, guys, just catching up there. Um, we need and want not just to solidity, but also fluidity and life. Awesome. Um, I'll do more breakdowns since the list of things are awesome. Okay, so people are just catching up. Eric, bonjour. Um, Glider Porto, good to see you, my friend. Red Fox. Um, okay, right. Now, let us go into the global Facebook community and look at your work. Okay. So let me to put on the double mic so we can go, Tiger, Tiger, uppercut. Okay, and then turn that off. Right, okay. Now, let us look at people's work. Okay, Paul, I will come back to every time I quick sketches, my sketches get more and more funnier. Every time, I don't know what you mean by funnier. Paul. Every time I quick sketch, my sketches get more and more funnier. I don't know what you mean about funnier, but what you have to understand is, is let me tell you a quick story. I promise I'll make this quick because we need to look at people's work. I got my first Dan Black Belt. I had to do 50 straight press-ups. 
I passed, no questions asked. When it came to my second Dan black belt, my master said, give me 50 straight, 60 press-ups. I laughed. I said, all these two extra years of training, because that's how long it took, two extra years. Uh, only you need to do 10 more push-ups. I can bang you out 100. He said, all right, then, show me 100. I got down there. I didn't even get past 20, and he just put his foot on my back. And he said, I tell you what, and he made me stand up and he put a broom down my back. I'll tell you why this is going with your drawing, okay? I love to put these analogies. He put a broom down my back. He said, this broom doesn't weigh anything. So it's not really going to uh, add any weight to your back, just a little bit. Go and do the press-ups. And like, I couldn't do all that. My form had to be perfect. I couldn't get past 15. And he said, you have trained yourself to do it a certain way. That way wasn't necessarily bad, but that's not what I call a second Dan presser. You know, so I went home and I was so disgruntled. And the reason why I'm telling you this is, is when you say every time I make quick sketches, my sketches get more and more funnier. What do you think? Well, the secret to the way I teach animation and the secret to everything, not just animation, is repetition. Doing things over and over and over and over again. But you must make sure that when you're doing things over and over and over and over again, you are constantly checking yourself over time. Am, am I... Do I understand, if your sketches are looking funnier and you don't understand certain anatomical aspects, or you, you, you don't really know how to draw drapery, or you don't really understand, you know, perspective, then you have to look at what is funny about this sketch? What is funny about it? Why isn't it working for me? Well, maybe perhaps I'm lacking in this area. I'd better take a month out and repeatedly do things in that, then come back and then keep doing your sketches. The sketches is like doing press-ups, okay? You can keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, but then bad habits sink in. I know even now, after years and years of doing press-ups, I put on 10 kg weight vests and do press-ups. Even now, I still, because it's such a simple, monotonous thing, sometimes I'll notice my head dropping, and I go, when I finish, I go, that was a bad 50. That was a bad... You're never going to get to the point where things are going to be perfect. But as long as you make sure that you don't, you're always checking yourself, that's how you're going to grow. So that's what I think about that, Paul. Okay. Hopefully my analogy has, has, has been able to make you understand it in a way that makes sense rather than just drawing. If you think outside the box of drawing, you kind of think of it like that. Right now, anyway, let's go back and look at people's work in the group. Okay. Um, right. Uh, we're going to begin with Young Mage Burger, who says, I'm considering retrying this, but I'll get to the body and head. Uh, when did you post this? 23rd. Uh, 23rd, yeah, six days ago, so I wouldn't have seen this. This looks good enough to me. I don't even know if I want to, um, why, I, I, it's so funny. This was in the Storyboard Pro window, and I got scared for a minute. I said, why is Storyboard Pro showing the internet? Okay, never mind. Okay, right. Um, so let's have a look at this. Mage, this is looking good. Okay. Uh, so we're going into the down. We're going into the up. I'm not too caring about your big kind of balloon feet that kind of spoil it a little bit. As long as your actions are correct. Okay. Right. See, this side is much better. Can you notice the shift of weight into the contact hair? We can see the shift of weight. Okay. Into the down, then into the up. But now we don't have that shift of weight. His body, his hips stay in place here. Okay. So... You, you're correct, okay? Here's what you're doing. 
I love this character, man. That was a bad drawing by me, okay? That was a bad breakdown, but I love this. These, char these characters are so difficult to accurately re recreate. But anyway, so if you're going to... You're doing the right thing, mage, but here's what you're doing. This side, you're doing it nicely because you're going, you're going into the down, okay? And then you're going into here, and then we're seeing the transition as you go into the down here. But then what happens... I'm going to make this yellow to explain where you're going wrong. It says, as you come up into this, you kind of lock in place and you don't really move smooth. Like it, there should be a big jump as you go into the down, but here there's a nicer transition. Here you kind of stay here and then just go to the down. So that's a big no no. Okay. Uh, not really a big no-no, but it, it's just spoils it, you know, on, you've, you've actually got the, you've actually got the, the, the theory a lot, you know, I'm quite proud of you, Mage, because a lot of people older than you, you're, you're 17, a lot of people older than you really, really kind of break on this one, they don't get that figure of eight, and you've got it, but this, you've kind of just, there's a little transition there, but just on this, these frames here, if you look at the, the hip moving, it's so subtle compared to this, which is nice. Now look, watch. Much nicer transition. Okay. But overall, it's good. Overall, it's good. You should be proud of yourself. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay. Save Katri. I was so happy to see. You, you just put a smile on my face all the time because you, you're, it, you're not going to join my library. I get that. But I say it's okay. You don't have to try and do what other library members are doing. It's better for you to, to, to learn from something where you've got some instruction. And so you have said here, AMB has told me to go at least to the Richard Williams survival kit. Um, so I decided to carry out the exercise same as in the book. Um, so you say you carried out some of the basic. Now, I did have a little look at these. Now, save Katri, you got to make the videos longer because we can't really see anything from this, okay? But, I, and I'm not going to comment too much on them because obviously I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm not paid by Richard Williams or Richard Williams' estate to, to do their job. Um, but you're doing the right thing. But, unfor but but I'm not quite sure what these exercises are. This one is more successful. It kind of makes sense. So you've obviously learned something about perspective from that. Okay. I would suggest that you, you know, if you feel you know these, I would suggest you doing uh, survival kit exercises five or six times in a row. Remember what I said earlier about repetition? Um, it applies to everything, not just my training. Okay, I remember that from Dylan. Um, this is by D-Rod. Now, D-Rod is a professional. He's worked on the Final Fantasy series, if I remember. If he's the same D-Rod that I've spoken to in my, um, in my AMB Discord streams that I used to do a long time ago. So it's good to see him posting here. AMB has inspired me to get some serious about my drawing and better at my skills. I've done several passes of studying book. But this pass, I don't think you're a member of my anatomy library, D-Rod, because this isn't really the way I do it. But anyway, I've done several passes of studying the body already, but this pass will be the most extensive. I have come from portrait drawing background where we focus a lot on outlines and rendering. Nothing wrong with that? Well, maybe the rendering. Rendering isn't bad, but line is everything. Uh, line and shape is everything. Understand that before you move on to rendering. So my ability to see in 3D shapes and construction is very, very, very lacking. Not necessarily if you, you know, it doesn't look that lacking to me here. Um, so this is what I'll be focusing on. I hope to post as much as I can here to grow along. Okay, now I don't think you're a member of my, there's not much I can say about this, okay? But I don't think you're a member of my training library. I think you are a member of my basics. I think you talked to me about joining. I remember getting a, a an application from you, but I don't teach anatomy like this. I mean, I tell you to focus on the separate parts, which is probably what you've got from me, but I never, I don't teach it like this. Uh, but this is a good start. And if you want to do it this way, just because I don't teach it like this, there's nothing wrong with that. But here's my problem. Just like I said about, the, I don't know if earlier you heard my press-ups analogy. I'm glad I gave such a detailed press-ups analogy. 
because I can now use it to tell everybody um, about things. If you try and do everything all in one go, the whole skull, and then say, okay, I know the frontal bone and I know the maxilla bone and I know all this, you're trying to, you're trying to, you're basically, you're basically like this small guy, okay, holding this massive bottle of drink, okay. I don't even know, maybe, maybe, maybe that's resting on a hill. I don't even know how he's, let's make him drink like that old game, Prince of Persia, you know. Like, there's no way that you're going to be able to retain all that knowledge. No way. Just no way. So I would say it's better for you to take an isolated part, whether it's the frontal bone. See, look look at the way you've dealt, dealt with this frontal bone here. It's not bad, actually, but when you move on to the contouring, you need to, like, you need to understand the, the shape of that frontal bone. And then you can go back on to that, this kind of method that you've got here, which I was telling Amberly about. So you're not doing the wrong thing. But then you'll have to kind of think about, you know, just let's not even focus on the nasal bone okay so let's get rid of that you'll have to think about understanding just this thing's shape okay and this is where this is going to contour out even more actually and come in here like this so then you're going to want to think about just this thing's shape because then actually from this area here there's going to be another bone, which is your zygomatic bone, which is going to fuse to the maxilla. So you're going to want to go, I would like to do five pages of a sketch pad of just this from various angles. This is what I call micro study in real animator training, by the way. We have macro study where we just look at this as a basic shape. Okay. And then we have what we call micro study, where you need to go away and understand the contouring of this basic shape, which is kind of what I was teaching while drawing this in, a, in my own way. You know, uh, micro and macro is very important because it's important to understand. I love using the maxilla as my example. So the maxilla macro shape would just be this. OK, so you'll just be doing shapes like this. OK, now what the, what on earth is that you say? Well, because obviously then if you want to like contour it it's like you're going to kind of contour it like you know you can get more detailed and contour it like this you know and contour it out there like that but that's not good enough that's still macro if you say what on earth is this well i'll tell you what it is okay it's basically here we're going to kind of fuse in here okay we're going to fuse around here like this and then you're going to understand now i've done this so many times to those of you who know okay that around you've got four incisors two on either side let's give him wonky teeth like me you know some going in some going out you know and then you've got canines okay here like this you got premolars okay you see, and then obviously this is going to have to be bigger as I come out for the mac micro. Sometimes you have uh, three, sometimes you have uh, two. You've got your your molars, okay, and premolars. So this is going to be a lot more like this, okay. Is going to come in here with the nasal. The nasal septum would be another thing, and the nasal cartilage, but that's a different kettle of fish. And then along here, up here, you're going to have zygomatic bone, which is going to kind of be fused with that. So then you would do five to ten pages of micro study of this. Okay? You would do five to ten pages of micro study from lots of different angles. You've seen it in the group. You're a member of the group. You've seen what people like Octavio and Selena are doing. So just doing this and then it's good that you've, this is a good way to start because you're saying, okay, I'm looking at all these different bones, but you're going to have to go in there and isolate them. Um, and yeah, as I say, five to ten pages of a sketch pad of each. Maybe even more, maybe even more, depending how serious you are. But that's a good start. It's a good start. Okay, that's Curtis's post on that. See, here's Hang Ming Hui doing some, you know, speak of it. Here's Hang Ming Hui, who is a member of the Anatomy Archive. He's doing a complete group 
micro study of the pelvis. And you'll see he's taken my advice and he's drawing in a sketch pad with pen. He's drawing in a sketch pad with pen. Now, what I can see is, as you see this side, you know, it depends. You see, if I was going to flip this, how did I do here? Okay, storyboard. I'm putting my life on the line here. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, edit, undo. Okay, so I can see that your balancing is off. Okay, one side is longer than the other okay now in a sketch pad you can kind of put it against the window or put a lamp underneath or put it on a light table and inverse the drawing and draw on the other side and correct it if you want but you know it's good to be able to analyze your drawing and see so while these are nice okay i love the line choices and these is good biro work really good biro work um you're only i think you're only 17 or 16 by the way so i'm really impressed I'm really, I had no idea you were so young when you won the competition to get access to the library. Um, but I'm so impressed. You, you know, you deserve to win, actually. Um, but here you can see this is on this side is much smaller than this side. Uh, the balancing is off. So as you like want to do a shape like the, the, the whole pelvis from the top, like you want to start with a circle. Even, so I'm drawing lightly here, okay? So you want to start with a circle like this so you can really say is it to the middle so that when you start creating the 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 shape on top okay you can kind of analyze that and then you can kind of put little measuring like let's let's go for the sacrum okay the sacrum is going to come in here with the coccyx i'm just going from memory okay so this angle is not completely top down because you wouldn't really see uh, okay right so then on here you're going to have the iliac crest so the iliac crest is going to come around here like this now i've immediately got this in line with this and i can just put this here now i can just hone in and look at this and think to myself is that the right shape is that the right shape okay so the iliac i prefer this iliac crest shape to this so i'm going to come around here i'm going to kind of balance that out okay so here's where the ischism is going to be with the ischial tuberosity coming in around here, see, and the pubis bone at the front. So this is purely from my memory. It's not going to be accurate. Always look at reference, okay? But you see, that's why I'm saying it's good, you know, D-Rod, if this is going to back anything up, you know, this is the acetabulum here, the ischial tuberosity, will be coming underneath maybe like this maybe like this okay so the acetabulum the femur bone will come out here like this so if i flip this storyboard flip okay you see i'm still out you see i'm still out but it's it's better you know i've kind of got my spacing correct and and this this is kind of correct i'm a little bit lopsided you know if i was a software man i would do this <laughs> okay okay um but you see but just by drawing basic shapes i am able to um not sure what's going on with your ischial tuberosity but you looked at the reference i didn't okay yeah the ischial yes that's probably you're right okay yeah yeah, no, I put the issues in far too far back. Yeah, that's you. You probably you looked at the reference. I didn't. Okay, so but yours is more front on. But still, yeah, that's probably more the kind of angle I was going for. That looks more like a female pelvis. That one, right? Okay, so but your that's kind of straying from the point. The point is is that you're balancing. You're getting better, but think about your left right uh balancing okay because there's evidence evidence can you see this shape here okay this shape here is making this shape and this shape here is making this shape now maybe in real life things aren't always the same shape but i'm pretty sure it would be probably if they were a different shape it would be probably something like that where they'd be a bit more evenly balanced on either side because if we look here like this you can see the space here and the space here just doesn't add up. Um, but this is good. Um, 
it is D Rod. D Rod, just to confirm, D Rod, are you the Final Fantasy guy? I I could be mixing you up with someone else. I don't want to mislead my audience. Okay, I don't want to mislead my audience into thinking uh, that you're the same guy if you're not the same guy, because it will just look like I'm trying to big up what I'm doing. Um, and so I like to keep to my brand, which is real. So if you're the same guy, if you're not, just say in the chat, and then I'll clear that up. Um, right, so that's Hung Ming Hui. Okay, so Safe Cut 3 has done another survival kit. I'm not going to look at all your survival kits, but I'm just happy that you took my advice. So I'm going to see what you're doing here. Oh, that's, you need to, you know, I would loop these for longer if you want people to see. Ultimately, you're doing these for yourself, but I would loop these for longer if you want people to see. Okay. Yeah, already you're kind of getting getting some timing in there. Um, good for you, Safe Katri. I'm, you know, it looks like you know. I don't know. I don't do this. I haven't really done anything from the survival kit, but you know, um, it's it's an established book. It's a recognized book. Richard Williams is a great teacher, so um, I'm pretty sure that's his nice arcing. Yeah, you see, it's um. Yeah, the timing is relaxed. I don't really know what his chart is on that, but there's slowing in and slowing out there. Um, not bad. Um, right, so now we have Amberly. Amberly is uh, you. You amaze me, Amberly, because in spite of um, you being in college doing all your college work you found time to do this exercise and this exercise in the training library is no you know spring chicken it takes a lot of time a lot of time because you got to put it on ones i think you put it on twos by the timing chart here and um yeah it's uh it's anyway let's see how you did finally finished this cycle i'm pretty happy with it despite the length of the legs and the arms getting slightly longer or shorter I think the torso telescopes, but it's a huge improvement for my early walk cycles from last year. Let's have a look. Let's loop it. Okay, why is the compression like that? I've seen this on Twitter. It looks much nicer compression. I don't know why it's playing like that, Amberly, but we can... Okay, here we go. Um... I think the first half of the video is poorly compressed for some reason. But never mind, I can see the action. Amberly, this is lovely, okay? Uh, you've really got the arcing nice. You've you've got the... You, your arcs are perfect, okay? Look at this hand here. It's, it's like, you know, that's what I would call a life fantasy arc because she did such a perfect execution of this exercise. Um, and your rear arm arcing is perfect as well. And the timing is great because look how it locks and slows into position, but it never locks into one place. It's always moving with the torso. Um, lovely stuff. Let's keep an eye on your head. Unfortunately, I'm only going to watch the head from this point onwards because it's just uh, it's difficult. Um, the head is also working well. Uh, there's a little bit of volume issue in the head in the but that's all right you know um for the most part you've kept this really solid the pelvis is moving very nicely and the legs in spite of the major flaw here in what i think what makes it what lets it down slightly and it's nothing to do with your animation is is the character's gait you've made him if we were going to look at him from the front he's going to be walking with his with his legs this wide apart because you've made so this leg here just just looks a little awkward now he went in i know you don't know this but even in like even if he was like in a fighting stance in martial arts we're always told like you've got your foot together you just turn that foot out this way and then you go one step further and then you got a wider stance so from the top view it would be this and this so you're you're, you're kind of in balance so his knee his knee would be here like this okay so his, his his knee would be here like this with his foot here and his 
thigh hair and his other knee would be out here like this so and then he would be kind of like from top view like this kind of thing okay that's not a perfect top view that's not a hundred complete 180 because i've kind of fudged it so you could see the see the angle but that's good enough okay so he would be like kind of like this kind of thing so it would never be that wide um so even if he was a fighter and he would have a wider leg it would never be that wide so it just what happens is, is it just looks a little strange that's the only thing that lets it down amberly otherwise from the animation perspective from everything perspective you have done a stellar job you really have you've kept things pretty solid i don't think the body telescopes at all okay it's just the leg placements and this leg looks considerably shorter than the other because of the it doesn't like the upper torso isn't in perspective and the ground is in perspective so you kind of like got a perspective on the ground and the upper torso could be like if it was on a flat plane you know so that's fighting it but you haven't actually telescoped the body you've done a great job with the body because what happens you've got you've copied it as instructed exact you've got enough squash and stretch going on and twist and torque in that torso to, if you would have just changed that not if you would have just looked a bit at the distance between these legs the whole thing would have worked really really well because of the pelvis is if you look at the twist in the pelvis and how the torque is it, you've really done that really well actually you can really see the anatomy in that working those hips just a shame of it just that slight, that that proportionate disproportionate leg because of the 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 the, the width of the step and what that also does is it affects the overall pose of the character whereas the character is supposed to be walking in a very kind of focused controlled way gives him this kind of slight ungainly walk um but that's just mainly down to the posing of the character the posing the way you copied the pose now posing is something i think you're a super talented i even wrote you a reference for you to get into your college so everything i said in that reference is true so if if you so i think you're super talented and you deserve the attention that you get on twitter and all that and you the stuff that you're doing is always going to turn heads but i've always feel felt if there's one thing that i think you need to work on is to get more appeal in your poses now i know you're working on that now and you're looking at milk carl and looking at silhouette but this is why I was talking to you about anatomy so earlier on uh, and, why, and why I don't want you fudging anatomy and just jumping ahead is, is you really need to learn about balancing because what makes a character interesting in pose is counterbalancing and balancing. So you could be big and bold. You could like have the hips hair like this and, you know, be big and bold and like, you know, have have the, you know, this kind of pose hair like with the hands on the hips and you know really kind of push it which is which is good you know you should you should push it you know and then if you know um you know uh the uh, anatomy you, then you'll know the extent that you can play with this and then play with the perspective of the torso or you know if you want to get more advanced you you get more subtle with the body you get more subtle with these things so say if i'm going to have a guy walking with his hands in his pockets i'm going to kind of accentuate the pose now always i go with the outline maybe he's kicking a stone while he's walking or something i'm just making this pose up okay so i'm going to think of him kind of in a down pose so if he's in a down pose then this hip is going to be like this so then this arm is going to be a little bit like this but then maybe his body is going to be twisted a bit more on this side okay from this aspect but then I, I need to think about the arm silhouette which is could be spoiling it a little bit so then I'll, I'll think about this coming here like this now i maybe have him i don't i was going to put his head looking up you see but then that's just going into that whole uh, over the top pushing it thing so i'm going to keep his head down and again this will go with this okay and this will go with this and then i can think about the balance of the silhouette of the character like this and i'll have his foot grounded in a down pose okay so then you see how i'm kind of thinking about all these things 
um, because I understand anatomy and I also understand structure and balance. Now, if I was going to go, if I was going to go on top of that and think about how to embellish it and push it even more about his garments and his clothes, I think. What kind of trousers are these? Let's make them big kind of baggy kind of trousers coming out here like this. Okay, like this. Now we're going to kind of think about this. Well, maybe there'll be some kind of like drag on this trouser here like this. Okay, maybe he'll have a, a shoe. Maybe give him like those kind of 90s, 80s kickers and jeans and things. Let's kind of give him kind of like a collars on his jacket you know let's have a little bit of this to emphasize the pocket let's give him I don't know let's give him a baseball cap put him old school 90s bit of hair out the back old school so now you see how I'm thinking about all this stuff beforehand let's flip it let's see how strong this pose is not bad okay um, not bad at all all right so now I've already done the hard work by getting that in. What, what I put inside is my choice. I mean, I haven't designed a character. Okay, let's let's do one more thing to the silhouette. Let's now let's let let's not give him a nose like that. So I haven't designed the character. Let me just make something up here to kind of like emphasize that the the real skill is not really so much what goes inside. Okay. Yes, that skill. Okay. You know, it, you got to understand appeal. So I'm coming in here. Uh, let's make him some kind of like elderly. I don't know why I've got Fagan from Oliver and Company. Something, some kind of like. Let's give him a, a beard. Let's make him a homeless guy with a beard kind of thing. Okay. So, but you see how you know the silhouette is all helping me with this. Okay. So now we've got this collar here like this. I maybe like got this one coming here. Like I don't know what I'm going to do with the jacket, but we're, we're going to give him comes kind of the big kind of sleeves. Let's put a kind of patch on the sleeve. Now I've decided to make him a, a homeless person. And then we're going to kind of go in here like this. It's a downtrodden kind of homeless person. So then we got these big kind of baggy pants. Okay, well, let's push it a bit. Let's kind of have a kind of tear in there with his knee. But his knee wouldn't do that. His leg wouldn't be, so I need to think about what his leg, okay. So we wouldn't really see that side there like that. So we've got a little tear in his pants, okay. So I'm really kind of pushing it a little bit, trying to get into the character of, of this guy, okay. Let's put the kind of turn up in there kind of scraggly sneakers okay not the best but we we can see where this is going okay then on this side we got there this one can have a patch on here like that okay All right. he's he's already kicked it off this foot is badly drawn but can you see, so the hard work really was the pose. So this is why I teach you this stuff. This is why I teach you to always look at the outside in. Because it's more about what are you saying with the character of the pose. So, no, no, don't say I'm still very bad at poses, Amberly. Don't, okay? You're not. Whenever you say I am, you're, 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 you're reinforcing a fact. So don't say I am. Okay, say I am working on ensuring that I'm great at poses. I'm great at poses and I'm working on it. Say that to yourself. So everything here, Amberly, is done to exquisite perfection with regards. If there are any flaws in the actual arcs and timing, they are flaws from my exercise. You have executed them exact. The only thing that have, has let you down is, is you've taken your eye off the ball on the posing of the character. Okay? That's the only thing. But from all other perspectives, you've done a magnificent job of uh, recreating this exercise. So, fantastic work. Fantastic work. Let's give you a care for that one because I know you've got so much on your plate at the moment. 
Okay. So, Genma Salsang. My advice to you before you start doing stuff like this. You're not a library member, but I can see that you're trying to you're you're trying to look at what people are doing in this group and you're trying to learn the right way. So, I'm going to give you some of my time because you deserve it because you're putting in time doing the right things. What I like about this is you clearly know a thing or two because you haven't done anything wrong with your tail action. Your tail action works. It could be better, but it works. Normally what I would say to somebody is, is don't waste your time trying to add a tail to the thing if you don't know how to animate uh, the ball. Now looking at this, it clearly looks to me like you know a thing or two because your tail is working. Okay, as I said, there are things that I would do to make it work a lot better, but that is a good scene. The thing what 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 I think you should focus on instead of doing the tail, though, is I would much rather see this with the original, just a plain bouncing ball with squash and stretch, timed nicely. Because at the moment, the timing doesn't really. There's a little bit of variation. But there's not enough, okay? It doesn't really have enough. It doesn't really have enough hang time. It doesn't really have enough bounce and spring. The squash and stretch doesn't work so well. The hang time doesn't work so well. It just does enough. And this little bit where it bounces backwards and forwards with the staggering, it's staccato, and we know what you're trying to do with it. But again, you're with a few understandings of what a favor is okay you would have been you know and a little bit of like okay he's gonna go here he's gonna go here and i just push the squash and stretch so he lands here i just put a little bit of a squash then i have him pop up here and go here bounce here then he's then a little bit of a squash and then he's gonna go up here and then you put that on ones so we keep it fast it'll look a lot better than the strange staggering staccato effect that you've got so I would say it would be much better for you to focus on getting the ball right first. Yes, I, it looks to me, everybody can look at a swinging tail and that'll really kind of add lovely kind of effects to your animation. But in this group, we keep our eye on the ball, okay? Uh, so these kind of things like tails and things like that, I know that you didn't do that for this group but a lot of people like to just do that and beginners because it takes the attention away from what you know the more you put on something the more you hide the flaws okay it's like adding reverb to a singer who's kind of loose i love for example my favorite band in all the world is iron maiden okay i love bruce dickinson the guy suffered throat cancer just a couple of years ago and then i went to see him live and he's almost 60 and he can still sing heavy metal great but if i'm honest he can't sing the way he sang when he was in his 30s or his 20s so they add a lot of reverb so his voice kind of survives a little bit they add a lot of effects to it you know to take away the kind of rawness the gruffness the the flaws in his voice from you know which is what happens uh, over time with deterioration of something like that so um i don't like to mention that about one of my most i mean he's he's uh, i really love the guy i look up to him he's he's so much he, he can he runs a business he goes and lectures in business schools he owns an airline he flies his own plane he flies the band to each different places where they tour he's the pilot he was a fencing champion so it's not for me to run him down and i'm not running him down but i like to pick the 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 highest examples to just get my point is all these things like tail swishing and bouncing boobies and follow through on the hair and all that is all great but if your main character is not working right or it's your character kind of is okay but you you wouldn't be posting in this group if you didn't want to get better i would say just get that ball correct okay get that working good okay it's not bad as it is but you could have got a lot better out of it okay 
Um, Carlos Leban, I can't really um, answer that. I think Abby gave you a good enough answer. For me, if you want to, if you're making a website, I have a, uh, maybe I can answer that in a, in a, in when I do my talk videos. Um, uh, I did clean up on some of the breakdowns. Okay, let's have a look, Daniel Garcia. Let's see, you took my advice. You decided to try and clean up some of your nice i love your cleanup line on on when you get a little bit thicker for some reason yeah this is nicer okay the thicker line is nicer okay this is good work you're getting so much stronger at drawing now daniel i'm getting excited hair with the you know hair when we look at what i want you to do is 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 again you look at the face hair um your your face is kind of correct in the proportions actually everything is you know you haven't got the head going like this the eyes going like this the chin going like this okay but you know i want you to think about um you know the let me pick another one okay so we look at these eyes so i want you to really think about you know, here you kind of got this eyeball bigger than this eyeball and this heavy hair. Don't go for that, okay? Even when I'm rushing and I'm live on a stream and I do stuff like this, I always slow down on the face, okay? So just take some time to get nicer in your face. And at the moment, I can tell that some of these shapes are not really Disney shapes. So, but you know what, Daniel? This is the best you're at now, and it's going to keep getting better, so it doesn't matter. This is already a vast improvement, vast improvement. See, so where you've got the lumpy lumps on this thing, I just know that they wouldn't do Disney bunching with this kind of harmony of line. It's kind of not harmonious, these line choices, the way they're going here. So I know you've copied it, but I just know that your hand-eye coordination on that copying is off. But it's okay. Because you see how when you come to, you, you're getting much bolder with your shapes here. Um, and you're getting much nicer. And this is exactly the whole point of you doing this exercise. This is the whole point of you doing these things to get better at this. And what I love about these, Daniel, is as, as you're doing this cleanup, you're paying attention to how they're arcing. So as I'm looking at this thing, animation, it's arcing correctly. That's the most important thing. You can have the loveliest drawings in the world, but if they don't arc nicely, then it's a waste of time. So great stuff. Gerbis few. I finally finished this long exercise, the spinning pendulum. Feel free to give your suggestions. I don't use the word critique. If you see any mistakes, well, there's mistakes in everything. Um, not just your work. There's mistakes in the best. There is a certain hop at the last part where the pendulum swings to the left that kind of stands out but it didn't actually strike me as bad okay let's have a look let's see how you did with the a and b pendulum spin points bounce bounce swing swing it feels a little soft at the start okay we lost a kind of oh nice Overall, this is a great test. I don't know why sometimes your fra you, your your frames disappear. I'm not going to care too much about that. That that's a, some kind of glitch. Maybe you've missed a frame, but a frame disappears and reappears. You know what? I think this is a great recreation of the exercise. Um, I would say it's like I don't know what that the, there's some kind of like displacement of hair of where, where where it feels like you've lost your arc because maybe are you working on paper this feels like software but as we come around here yeah the it doesn't feel like see it just feels like yeah the way that you haven't drawn the spot there this kind of takes away the arc the line is not arcing properly and it spoils the flow okay but that's this is a stein just one drawing you can fix but um I love everything else. The motion blur is lovely. Um, the settle is amazing. I love the bouncing. I don't. I don't. I think it's. I don't have a problem with what you did at all. 
I think I love in fact you exaggerated it and it looks better so I like that bounce at the end beautiful my only suggestion is, is at the start it feels a little slow as it's springing to life if you look at the original test the way I time this thing is, is I want it to be like a kicking baby kicking and screaming and then getting slower and slower as we slow into these points before so we start off kind of like kicking to life then we calm down and slows bigger swings and then we suddenly speed up and go again so that was the pace of it but it was the timing of your beginning, just these few bounces here, feels a little bit controlled and slow. But um, other than that, um, yeah, uh, nothing to say. You you pretty much bossed all of these uh, opening exercises. But then again, looking at your Instagram, you look to me like you're, you, you know, once you once you complete the basics and intermediate al album, I'm going to be very interested to see if you try your hand at animating your own drawings because uh, I think you're going to get a lot of attention because your drawings are really nice. What I, well, in my opinion, okay, there are things that I think uh, ana anatomy-wise and whatever you can work on, but we're not here for that. We're here for your real animator training. But I'm just excited for you because you seem to be taking such a good grasp of these basic fundamentals. And um, if you start bringing your own stuff to life, um, I think you're going to maybe turn a few heads because I, I really like your drawings on Instagram. Um, so that I know that's not what we're talking about here, but I, I mean, there's not much I can say about this. This is uh, this is really, you know, an almost flawless recreation of the complete pendulum spin. Save Katri, you've said in the earliest day they did this type of effect for going fast, but around World War II they do motion blur on some effects or glitch to show power, most in cartoons, but nowadays they don't because they do the action to give it a more natural look. Save Katri, I'm with Alexander Kim here, okay? You, all you've done is what, what you know, you haven't, you, you're calling this an old fashioned thing. And I'm not going to defend it. I look, I don't really do this kind of smear frame, elongated effect. Where is it? This effect here. Okay. This is a Richard Williams exercise. I'm not going to talk about it. You've learned it. You've done the right thing. But I just want you to check your mentality here. Okay. I, you've said... Around World War II, they do motion blur on some effects or glitch to show power. But nowadays, they don't because the animation just do... They just do action and reaction to give a more natural look. No. Today's animation is far from looking more natural than the old stuff. Today's animation... You know what I call these things in anime? What you think is more natural? What they call smear frames? I call them skid marks. Because I think they look like fucking shit. Alright. And they stick out like a sore thumb. When I look at a nice piece of anime. With the characters somersaulting and flipping around and everything. Then suddenly I see this long horrible. I just say what the fuck. Who cleaned the film. Who shat on the film. I mean that is just you know. It's a personal preference thing. Okay that's my personal. I'm not speaking with authority here. I'm just talking about my point of view. But that ain't natural. That don't look more natural than that. Don't, let's not try and belittle the old masters as if what they're doing now is somehow... Look, animation has regressed. It hasn't progressed. No way. And if you talk about software animation where you say nowadays they just do action and reaction, if you're talking about 2D cutout where they just kind of pop and snap from one pose to another, that doesn't look more natural. That looks like popping and snapping and it just looks fucking shit you know it's it's just jittering nonsense that's not natural um the reason why people still want to learn how to do hand-drawn animation is because they're tired of their characters just jumping snapping without a decent head turn from one to another with just a little bit of uh, easing in and easing out with this mechanical engineered software look so um 
I'm I'm giving you my time safe cut three because I can see a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of will in you to try and learn the right things. And I love it. But I just want you to keep certain I just want you to put things in perspective here, okay? Um what what you see in that Richard Williams frame is no different to an anime girl with boobies and camel toe somersaulting with a with a big smear shit on her panties, you know. Um, in a smear frame so um, I'm using that kind of language because I, I, I like to talk to the young in their own kind of way of talking I know you're not you might not be young but like let's get real here we're not gonna get away with running down the old masters as if somehow we've all moved on from that what my channel what my videos are about is what I call real animator training is we're gonna get back to the old masters to put quality back into animation. That's why I'm online. Because animation, 2D animation in particular, is suffering a fate worse than death at the moment. There's too many ignoramuses fiddling about with software, you know, learning more about how to be a technician than an artist, okay? What my channel is about is about making you an artist and leaving the technician to the tech heads, okay? Who are soon go who's soon going to be replaced by machines, okay? Artists, true artists, can never be replaced by machines because it's a general expression coming from inside you, all right? So I just got to be clear on that. So I love you, Safe Katri. I'm not having a go at you, but I'm just putting things in perspective. And I always take it as an opportunity to talk to my wider audience out there about let's get real. Okay, that's what real animator training is about. Let's not pull the wool over anyone's eyes. What they're doing nowadays ain't even half of what they used to be able to do. And that, that I'm not saying that like an old man going, it was better in my days, because things should be better now. Progress is important. Everything should progress. It's disgusting the way this medium I love so much called animation is regressing, not progressing. It's regressing as an art. It's becoming a technical exercise. It's being all about the software. How much polygons this character has, how much fur, how much, how much lighting and rendering. All about the machine, if you're talking 3D. And then when we talk 2D, how oh, let's build a rig so we can save time on drawing and then leave it to the two of harmony or whatever. It's not about the art. It's not about the art. This channel is about breaking it back about the art. Daniel Garcia, this made me smile. Not perfect, but did the sketch from a scene I like from Tales of Little Women. Okay, I'm just going to look at this. Like, from, from your perspective, Daniel Garcia, this is one of your own drawings now. Um, and I can really see the improvement. So keep going. We can see how I can see your shape language. Can you just see little things down here like the your your choice of the way you... I love the fact that, you know, I can see the definite triangle of the leg here and the definite triangle of the other leg. But then when you come and do the skirt down here, you kind of got this bumpy little thing going on here. Let's just keep it clean. Okay, clean. Learn to learn the big clean strokes and then learn how to, you know, you know. Okay, so let me just talk about this for a second. So we've got a sleeve and we're going to make a basic kind of horrible stiff triangle okay now we're going to put an arm under that sleeve i once had did a tutorial you can't buy it anymore because i've moved on but i had somebody pointing like this with a finger and a sleeve so now we're going to kind of think about a few things about this okay so let me just make this gray so in order for my thing okay it's going to be resting on the guy's arm up here it's going to be resting on this hair like this so we're going to now bring this in, okay? And we're going to kind of create a lump here. Now I'm going to think about this shape being clean. And I'm going to think about, now I could just make this like this, or I could lump this out again and then bring this in like this, okay? And then if I was so inclined, but he's not really bending his arm so much, so I don't want to do it there. It's a relaxed arm position. So that's why I'm thinking more about this shape here. Now, as this is here, I've got to think about how big his wrist is, okay? He's a scrawny guy, so we're going to have this. So, this, if, if we just did this, it's going to be like this, okay? 
but then we want to think about the this kind of is going to be compressing together so we could just kind of make it even on either side or we could play with the balancing okay so i might have it like this here and i might have it straight so this is the harmony of the shape choices coming from the other side now i might want to put one around here like this now I, before i go doing all this and getting excited i have to think about this okay well i have to think about well is it what kind of garment is it okay where is the sleeve going to end is it going to end here because that's going to affect this so i'm going to maybe his chest is here it's going to end it maybe about here okay we'll start it here we'll end it here so now i'm going to think about what's going to happen here well we're going to think that this is going to be wanting to come straight here like this so we're going to kind of taper this out okay and then we're going to bring this we're going to bring this hair like this no we're going to think about this kind of curling kind of wanting to get to this point okay wanting to get to this point so we're going to kind of think about we got this hair we're going to think about joining it and how it would curve a nice curving swooping line like that you see then i can come in here and think about different things like the negative space all happening here so i'm going to put this worth in here like this and bring this down underneath and that would make me want to have to change this a little bit okay so the way to change that a little bit would be then to think about well that would be coming in and then straight out of here a little bit like this then i would think about maybe the the lines okay if i put this line here like that because i want to think if i take this away a little bit i want to keep that relaxed so let's do that let's keep it a little bit more relaxed right so we want to think about this is where his arm is and the garment is going to kind of be doing something like this coming off it so I'll think about the line maybe coming here okay and then a line coming here like this and maybe if I want to I can put one here and that can be like when we want to start shading it in so if I was going to start shading it in can you see how the drapery will help me get a shade out of that the drapery and then I can put a little kind of cuff in there so your drawing is getting insanely better from doing this study uh, Daniel Garcia but now I want you to think about I want you to watch that little demo that I gave you and when you come back here I want you to watch that demo a couple of times to really take it in and when you come back here, you want, I want you to start, when you do these kind of things again, like the foot going in the boot, the leg coming from under the skirt, this knee here, okay, behind this skirt, I want you to really think about how those shapes were that up. Now, maybe you're studying from someone else's shape, or maybe you made this pose up. If you made this pose up, then it's fine. Uh, you can do it the way I told you. But if you're studying from someone else's shape, I very much doubt that they would have had these kind of little, just the slight things of the shape harmony. I'm I'm refining. What you want to think of it, Daniel, is I'm refining your uh, uh, application of the secret science of shape simplification here. That's that's what. I, that's, so I want you to think about things like that. But you're making, you're coming leaps and bounds. Dylan Doster, I second everything that Akau said. Okay. Akau the warrior basically gave you the, the, the perfect feedback on this. You've recreated this exercise really nicely. Uh, did you put this on ones? Two, one, two. No, this is on twos. But hey, Dylan, you did such a good job of, of, on the timing on this one that I almost thought this was on ones. You did such a good job that I almost thought this was on ones. Yes, your drawing of the sack needs to improve, but I firmly think as you continue on these exercises and you move on to the follow through and then the primary and secondary, your sack is going to be a lot more three dimensional. There's some dancing around lines and creases on him that aren't quite working yet, but I'm not going to focus too much on that. See here, I don't quite understand the way we kind of lose that. Then we gain a few lines under his arm there and then it disappears. Um, so... I think, Dylan, be less clean on here, okay? Don't be so clean with your line here. Now you're on the flower sack. I'd much rather see 
You know, this line isn't so clean, Dylan. You know, it's not as clean as your flower sack line, but imagine if your flower sack was moving with this kind of line, okay? It ain't going to make the world a difference to the to the finished look, but it's going to make the world a difference to you. Your Okay, as I said, this is Dylan's flashlight, okay? Dylan is in the dark, okay? This is Dylan with his... I don't know why I'm in a baseball cap mood at the moment, okay? And he's holding his flashlight okay and you're in the dark everything is dark and here you've kind of got animation animation law here and here you've got clean finished look okay where well, you're putting your flashlight here okay now you already been through that basics archive so you're executing things like arcs and in betweening and all that so well which is why i said you know i almost thought it was on once so you can afford to take your eye turn your flashlight a little bit onto other things but you still need to work on some of those things because they're kind of dancing around there a little bit um so i would rather you switch your flashlight back to this and the major first one about this which akau's point is is the starting pose can you see this leg looks like it's in space now i know in my test i started him like i gave i give this flower sack this mickey mouse kind of thing where we kind of have one foot here one foot there and we kind of have him so it's not on the same line kind of thing but then when i walked him off i had him walking off on a very linear plane okay but the way you've kind of drawn that heavy line underneath and again just like amberly You've gone and put that foot so high in the ground, it almost looks like he's putting his foot. Let's have the flower sack being the great thinker, okay? It almost feels like he's he's putting his foot on on a step there. So it just takes away and just spoils the whole uh, the whole thing. So yeah, it kind of takes that away. So even if you erase that bottom line, it would still look like that the way you pose that first character. So that's the major flaw in it is that original starting pose the way you've drawn the sack with these jiggling dancing things i think if you just focus less on being clean and really ask yourself does that work does it look like the sack is folding and creasing or does it just look like lines are dancing around um, at the moment it looks like lines are dancing around so you need to you would have needed to go back and sort that out i wouldn't go back to this exercise though uh because i think you've pretty much nailed it um, you you pretty much nailed it. I would just say uh, just switch that concentration level back so we don't get those jingling, jittering lines um, and look at your posing. Um, the cleanup is not important. It really isn't important. You see, um, you see Daniel Garcia, right? Daniel Garcia is the perfect example of people who say, do I need to draw first or animate? Daniel Garcia came in like a all guns blazing he completed the basics archive the intermediate archive and the advanced archive he didn't and then he went through the anatomy archive afterwards unlike and the anatomy archive kind of picked his drawing up but i, I said daniel your drawing is way you know he's daniel daniel's drawing is weak um he won't mind me saying so because he's working with me to improve his drawing and now we see how his drawing is suddenly like he's just making a few studies of all these things and it's all falling into place. All of those things are falling into place. So, but Daniel is able to make such good studies of the arcs and accuracy of these things. Um, and he's working on his drawing afterwards. So take a leaf out of Daniel's book there, Dylan. Don't focus so much on being so clean you can keep things solid with a rough line as well i can animate like this i mean the whole film bed knobs and broomsticks was animated like this with a rough line and it was still solid last week somebody asked me to animate legs for them um and we did this this is all rough but it's solid okay it's rough but it's solid right so we can we you know you you'll be coming onto that cleanup when you do that head turn in the advanced archive so don't worry about that that rotation you know which is a nightmare okay mage burger you gone on and you did the body yes the elongated torso does look strange but we don't care about that we care more about you understanding the aspects of a front walk let's look at it i don't know if you changed that it doesn't look like you changed those legs okay i think you were kind of happy with that um 
I'm just watching those legs. Yeah, no, the legs are still the same. Um, everything else is working well in that upper torso, though, mage. So, um, yeah, I would just, I would just finish it. I wouldn't try to change the proportion of the body. Your brain needs to understand the arcing of the arms and everything else. So let's just finish it. I think I wouldn't even correct the pelvis. Now you've taken it to this stage. Um, just finish it. Uh, put the arms in there and bring it to a, a landing. I think you 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 seem to be doing pretty well. Seems to be um, for a seventeen-year-old who's you know um, you're animating you know a front walk better than a lot of adults. I don't consider a seventeen-year-old adult. So um, can awesome. Just just keep on keep going. Okay, I don't know if you're watching this, Grigory. I'm considering joining the library. I want to know whether or not there's an option to upgrade from the basics to the full sometimes. Yes, there is. Um, uh, you can upgrade. Uh, you, I mean, if you see somebody, I just upgraded and I announced it in the thing. So uh, you have a year to make the decision to upgrade or not. Um, and you just pay the difference. Um, Tim McHugh, since I already got the jog run and front walk animations, I finally animated the front run cycle. It took days to draw the frames and I did the best I could. Let's have a look at your front run. It looks good. It feels like there's a slight exaggeration on one side over the other. Again, Tim McHugh, you're focusing your flashlight on being clean rather than being getting getting some basic things right. Okay. So that's the same thing. So let's have a look. So we've got, I don't want to know why it did that. I want to, it's not letting me frame by frame it. Okay, one, okay. So we're going high up. Okay, here, he kind of floats up. And then he, I don't feel, yeah, that it, yeah, this, now this, I think what happens here is his body goes very small, and then it gets super big on this frame, and he circles around, I think, let me examine your figure of eight arc, so the figure of eight, okay, yes, 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 we're getting a very mechanical arc in the movement, Here's what's happening to your pelvis, okay? Your pelvis is coming down. Instead of a nice figure of eight like this, okay? Or even a figure of eight like this, okay? Your kind of pelvis goes down, and then it goes out, and then it kind of zigzags up like this and comes straight down, okay? So let's look at that. Just watch the pelvis, okay? Watch. I want you to watch, as I frame by frame this, I want you to watch your pelvis area, which is represented by this window shape, like this, okay? Now watch. Down, down, okay? Now look, see, now we're coming. This is like a nice figure of eight. You're coming down on the line, okay? So let me, let me, I mean, what I drew and represented is what I saw, but now I'm looking at it like this, I can be more things. So you've kind of come down, which is right, okay? Now everything kind of goes strange here. So now we come, as we come here, this is fine. You've got the, you got the weight of the pelvis, okay? Now, now you're kind of coming up to the side, which is good, okay? So now you're coming up to the side okay it's a little bit close but this doesn't matter that's fine um okay now this is where we go kind of go off okay and it feels very very mechanical the pelvis kind of goes like this okay we were instead of going like this it makes a difference okay it's, it seems like a subtle thing but it makes a big difference okay because then your car your character doesn't have any the weight it feels like it's drifting okay like it's sliding and drifting uh because of that okay then from there we kind of then have now okay we haven't even got to the center line which is where you started your your arc 
arc path so we don't come to the center line so we go here okay so here is your center line so you go here and then you go here like this all right and then we kind of go down okay wow that is a huge down in that leg a huge kind of like those legs the legs don't feel well, another big mistake which I'll tell you then why this doesn't work so well I'm sorry to say that because I actually I actually love Tim McHugh Tim McHugh has commented and supported my channel since I it since it began and he's a fan of the video game Shenmue and he paid on the Kickstarter for the Shenmue uh, thing so I like Tim McHugh so I'm not, you know, I, I really don't like telling him about this at the moment. But I'll ha I have to. I want to help him. Okay. Right. So now, now we're coming down like this. Okay. Then. Okay. So we've gone down. Then we're coming up in a very linear way like this. Okay. So we're not going up like this it makes a difference that one little thing makes a difference but that's not just that's not the only thing what's causing the problem here okay then we're go cur curling around here into this okay so this is your pelvic path now when we start the first walk in real animator training tim we always so you have a figure of eight but the reason your figure of eight feels so mechanical is your pelvic pelvic path is like this. It looks a bit like an iliac pelvis, doesn't it? But when we first start, we always start with the legs and we always talk about the pelvis because that is the linking point of the upper and lower torso. It is the be all and end all of getting natural movement in your animation. So that's the first thing. But had your legs had a little bit more... Um, you thought about the in-betweens of your legs a little bit better in your poses, it would have still worked better than the way it works now. Because that, that figure of eight is flawed, but it's still a figure of eight. It would have still, you could have still pulled it off. But what the problem that happens here is, is now look, I'm watching his leg go into a contact. Now we're going into a down, and then we're push, going into a push-off. Okay, and then as we go up, okay, and we're coming into the contact, okay, now, if we look at this position here, okay, and the contact position, and the down position, okay, what I'm trying to, what I think I will just, without slowing it down, because I don't want you to confuse you, because it's so subtle when you look at your drawings, is, is your leg feels like it isn't really changing from this position. Yes, you kind of followed the exercise where it does bend more in the up and it, it is a little bit like relaxed in the contact, but you know, it and it bends more in the down, but you're haven't you've just kind of changed it a little bit here and a little bit here. So that leg is always kind of feeling like it's in this position. So your character seems to grow and shrink when actually the proportions of him aren't that aren't that disproportionate. You've kept volume okay but the reason i say why people lose volume is not you know you gotta they're looking too closely at volume and that's not the reason you're losing volume the reason you're losing volume is arcs okay and the length and proportion of other things so even if we're you know we need to see this leg as a contact it needs to be straighter then we need to feel that leg as a down it needs to we need to feel that down we need to feel the transition from this to this and then we you know you do get the push off but your push off kind of feels a little like the leg is growing because everywhere else it's just you don't feel the difference and then we need to feel the the rise into the up position okay which is kind of similar to the down position but in the air so this is you know but we need to actually feel the change between each of these positions and this is where what lets your animation down because if we look yes there's a change in the push off is the only real one if we look at the others you kind of copied it accurately but if we look at that contact into the down we don't really feel the change but there's a big shift in the body and that's kind of countering 
the effect. So if we look, we kind of feel the power in the legs. This is nice, okay? But there's a big shift in the body there. So ultimately, essentially, Tim, this is a you you've got all of the elements in place, okay? It kind it kind of works. It's not. I would say I would I would say this is what I would call seventy percent, okay? Uh, close to the final exercise. So you haven't, as I said, I've got a lot of time for you, and I gave my reasons. Shenmue. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, <laughs> but uh, so but I've got a lot of time for you, which is why I want you and Dylan Doster to take your eye off the flashlight. Okay, actually, your legs aren't as bad as I initially thought, okay? It's more the figure of eight. I, when I look at it playing, I do feel the, 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 the change. But that's still a thing in, with your legs there. But please do not be so caught up in producing... This is not, this is not work, okay, to be necessarily presented to everyone, okay? Because eventually, you know... Real animator training exercises by me are going to be just like survival kit. Everywhere you look, people are going to be doing, presenting these runs and walks. And they're all going to kind of look like giving you the same thing, okay? So, you're not really doing it to present to other people. Because your front run and Life Fantasy's front run and Amberly's front run, if they were all perfect recreations, would all look the same. And, you know there's no real distinction you've just what it what what they've done is they've given you the knowledge and the ability and that's what it that's why you're doing this knowledge and ability so let's not worry about presenting it to people in a clean crisp manner and all that you know that as you work your way through the archives you're going to have to learn this anyway you're going to have to but the basics we don't care the fundamentals, we don't care so much about clean. That solid head turn, we do. And that's the bitch, okay? The solid head turn at the end of the basics archive is when you will be able to knock yourself out and try and do cleanup. But these are the most difficult foundational fundamental aspects of animation is, is getting the walks and runs right. Because down, up, passing position, down, contact, down, pass position, up, is the is you know that's what a bouncing ball is okay the bouncing ball makes contact it does a squash which is a down it ha goes it, it does a stretch okay which could you know literally be an up before a passing position but then it has to go up and then go back into here so it's a, it's a mixture of all those things you know a head turn is the same you've got a contact your head is this way a contact your head is that way Okay, a pass position, your head is halfway. Okay, then you're going to go into a down to get a nice arc so you don't do this kind of shit here. You would if you were just doing a very linear thing. And then you've got an up. You could have an up because the head goes a little bit beyond the head turn and then it'll settle back down. So it is the fundamental to everything. It is, and it's why you need to be able to manage it with all the different arcs of the pendulums representing the arm, the bouncing ball representing the torso moving in figure of eight, uh, the pelvis, sorry, the head representing a bouncing, all these are legs, pendulums, all these kind of things working in harmony with each other in order for you to get the best out of it. You actually, Tim, you actually haven't done a bad job, okay? It works. You, we see. I see the figure of your arcs in the figure of eight of the hands work. The head's got the side to side. It's a bouncy walk. It's pretty solid. The reason why I I went that little step out to explain to you what I explained to you the way I did is because I know that you 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 know you've been trying to self animate and self teach yourself animation. You used to post survival kit stuff on my wall way back. You know. Uh, even before real animator training. I used to see you trying your own walk cycles and stuff. So I know how much you want it. I know how much you care about this stuff because even after all these years, here you are, you join the library, you're now doing my tests. So I'm going to give you the time and the passion in my feedback that I think you deserve. Um, so I want you to really think about that. So as it stands, if I just looked at it, 
this hand position is a little wide and splayed and 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 uh, uh, little kind of strange uh, on 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 the sides, but overall, you know, it's a pretty good test. It's a pretty good test. I would say about 70, 75 uh, percent. So you can move on if you want, but I want you to seriously, I want you to seriously think about that. And now you're going to move on to the head turns where it's all about being clean. Okay. Which is why I've given you that <laughs> that kind of talk. Um, so Jong An is in the anatomy. Not much I can say about this. She's just yeah. You just post a gif. That's all it needs to be. And the gif isn't playing So Jong, but that looks like a a good uh, study of the radius and ulna elbow. Um, this made me laugh. I love the way Selena Nina has broken down this Wizard of Oz. Okay. Um, the things you noticed from the study, the way Dorothy slows in and out of the turn, the way the left arm and hand arcs up, over and down, the way the bag gets dragged, moves in the arc and slows in speed up and down. Okay, now this is the way to do a breakdown. You see, she's consolidated all of the things, all of those laws. Okay, I haven't even seen what she's done, but let's, that's, what, that's what makes me happy. She's not just mindlessly copied. Right, okay. This is a, a, a great attempt, okay? I know because, you know, it's difficult when you're studying people in a skirt, Selena. Um, the way that she's turned her legs, we can't really feel the, the shift in the weight and all that. But what I love about this is you've tried, okay? It's one of those scenes where it's difficult. It's an old film. Your frame by frame would have been a lot harder to get on a live action. But so the actual turn, you kind of have a slide in the, the, one, the foot. OK, so she's supposed to take one foot off the ground. OK, but it feels like her feet are kind of just sliding like this. So the turn is a little misinformed. I'm, I'm glad though you uh, you haven't done anything wrong. You're, do you're doing the right thing. You're drawing what you're seeing and you're trying to analyze it. Okay. And what I love about this is you have now gone in and you've really tried to make an anatomy analysis of this. And this is going to strengthen your drawing to no end. So people in the audience take note. Selena has only got access to the, the basics and the anatomy archive of my library and I let her I gave her free membership at the beginning of the year and I think it's really incredible the way that you're able to do all this and you've got to this point now uh, so yes while while you don't really um, you kind of haven't really understood the the mechanics of the turn because I don't really, you know, it, 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 the feet kind of, sh we don't see the feet actually move. So as you move on to the skeleton would have been a chance for you to use your, see from here I can see that, that the way that you got that triangle in the foot. Okay, so we see a skirt here and then the way you've got this triangle shape here. I can see that there's a, the foot has come off the ground here. Okay. So naturally, if that foot comes off the ground, we're going to want to see that foot arc and come back down. But what happens is you kind of bring the foot down here and it kind of slides. Now, there could be a camera move, but it was probably a locked shot from the time the film came out. Um, so I just think you need to continue doing this, Selena. You have, again, hair on this last pose, okay, with the legs in relation to the hip, okay. If the hips out here like this, and then this leg is here like this, okay, and this leg. Now, this could be because of foreshortening. Maybe that is what you saw. There's so many reasons. If you see that, you say, well, how could the leg be doing that? I understand that that's probably what you saw. Because if we think about the, the girl's hips, okay, the, the hip is going to be more to this side. Maybe, but there, there'll be foreshortening in this. It'll be more like this, and then, you know this one would be more back here like this okay so the, it could very well have done that but you know 
it's if if you do these kind of things it's important to be inquisitive with your mind now i know you've only been learning for a year and you know it's it's you can't expect you to just know that but i'm just giving you food for thought here to think about just keep doing what you're doing selena this is the first you just have to continue okay continue 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 this is the start See, it's a long, long road with many a winding turn. You see, follow the yellow brick road, follow the real animated road, follow the real animated road, follow the, follow the, follow the, follow the, okay? So that's what you need to do. Just, this is the start. Continue. Your drawing is going to get better and better and better. So keep doing what you're doing. Okay, that was somebody who just joined the library. Fantastic. Bilal, Bilal, the newcomer, pendulum drop. Let's see what you have. Awesome, Bilal. 14-year-old Bilal showing all his elders how it should be done. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you what, Bilal. Some of those you haven't done badly, okay? The reason why I think that's happened is because you are doing what you know, it's difficult to draw a nice definite pendulum line. And even I sometimes like to do that. And But you've kind of like got hairy lines and it kind of slows your pendulum up seeing those hairy lines moving around like that. So I actually think you did a good job with that, Bilal. But here's the thing, Bilal, one more time for me, okay? You're young, you've got time on your hands, do it once more, okay? Do that once more for me, please. Um, Cameron Allen Davidson Black. Uh, front walk cycle with dorsal. Um, I remember Merlin's owl telling Arthur that this is just the start. Yes. The um, Cameron Allen Davidson Black. I am liking that. I am liking that. There is a, there is a lot of inconsistencies in the head. Um, and that dorsal in the top is... The arcing of this torso, okay, it's not so much that it's losing volume, but look at the crosshairs of the torso, okay? Now we get this big, big torso, and now this small, small torso, okay? I'm going to let that fly, but what I don't, what I don't want to let fly is the chest, okay? The chest is going down and down, and then it goes up higher, okay? The chest should not go higher on the down. Okay, so that's where we're getting problems. Okay, yes, as he's going on the down, the chest will be angling up, but we don't want to go below the down on the chest. The chest is going to be at its lowest on the down. Okay, so I would just take a little look at that torso again, um, Cameron, and iron it out. I don't care about your your uh, changing volumes in the head. You're gonna you got a real big task ahead of you with the head turns in the next set of exercises after this, which will sort all that out. This is this is just you know, but what I do care about is the easier shapes like the torso, and that is the that is the um, fly in the ointment. Or, or whatever or fly in the soup or whatever you want to call it so let's 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 uh let's do something about that hang ming hui consolidated anatomy i'm not gonna i've already given you a little bit of an explanation so now back with the scribbly okay don't hatch like this okay don't 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 hatch like this don't hatch like this don't better not to shade your drawings like this my friend Okay, if you're rushing, it's fine. If you're just sketching, okay, but it's it's just nicer for you, okay. If you're gonna shade like that, create the shape of the sh shape of the shadow first, okay, and then even then I don't want to do it. Even then I don't want to do it because I just want to just 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 go around the contouring, you know. Even even then you you might you might sometimes go like that, but but. But just go along, just just do one lines, okay? And then you can change and then just just like just don't get into the habit of this, you know? Sometimes if you're hurrying and you wanna make a quick sketch and you just wanna see what it looks like, you know, you see 
you, you just want to say okay okay like uh, i'll put put some quick shadow under his eye okay and my, like the thing is is there's a look now you're seeing me doing that okay but there's a hierarchy okay there's a there's a hierarchy to to when you can and can't do that because i'm doing that now okay and you can say a lot of people but at the moment you don't you you know you're showing talent but you don't really have the ability yet okay it's it's a stage thing don't 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 go to the end of the journey okay when you haven't really got completed the journey okay what you're doing right now is your i would say at the moment you're a green belt in martial arts this, if Aaron AOX was here, he would enjoy watching this drawing at the moment. I'll make them typical kind of drawings for that that would make Aaron AOX laugh. Okay, so at the moment you're you're a you're a green belt. Okay, we'll call you a blue belt because I don't have a green. Okay, and then you've kind of looked over here. Okay, you kind of looked over here and you've seen that your master left his black belt lying around. So you've gone and you've put on your black belt. Okay, let's make you looking even more evil. <laughs> okay, you've gone and you've put on your black belt without really knowing what it is to be a red belt and a red belt with a stripe and all that kind of stuff. So don't, don't shade like this just yet, okay? because you've just seen that I can shade like that and it still looks good but it depends on what you know okay but that so I wasn't going to give you advice because you're doing what you need to do I've already spoken to you about this but I saw you shading like that I advise you not to do it not just yet okay complete the journey first um Okay, so that is the looks like we're at the end that is the growth development and progress um stream done uh we've looked at people's work what's this people have asked to join okay welcome welcome okay i'm approving anybody anybody can join this group you do not have to be what i call a real animator real animator is a nice marketing tool i have named my library members my real animator training library is real animator training library so if you join you become a real animator now that is an antagonistic thing because it'll make people say, but I'm a real animator. What right is he not to call me a real animator? That's your problem. This is just, you know, your members of my group are real animators. <laughs> you see, so I, I see I'm, this is group is so real. I tell you why I name things the way I do. Okay. So anyway, you don't have to be a real animator to join this group. You, which is a member. Okay. Um, so, you know, don't, don't, don't get your, uh, uh knickers in a twist okay you don't have to be a real animator to join <laughs> you, you don't have to be a member to join this group anybody can join this group okay but this group i will uh i i i don't guarantee okay i'm not gonna allow this one no we're not this i don't care if glenn keen directed it delete this post remove this post doesn't belong in this group this isn't a sharing fan group okay um i just deleted that I don't want that on my wall, okay? I don't care if Glenn Keen directed it. It just looks like Pixar. It, lo it looks like anybody could have made it. T take the pencil and drawing out of Glenn Keen. It doesn't look like Glenn Keen. Um, there's nothing special about it. I, I couldn't even finish watching the trailer. So, um, yeah, post removed. Not a, you know, I normally let Stephen's post stay on the wall because he shares hand-drawn masters glenn keen is a hand-drawn master but i'm sorry that film is nothing to do with hand-drawn animation and it it could have been done by some button pushing um mouse pushing 3d motion capture tweak artist for all i know uh, unless somebody told me hey glenn keen did that so uh am i being harsh no i'm just being honest that's what i think um so anybody can join this group but you see I, I didn't delete, uh, you see how I didn't remove Stephen from the group because Stephen generally shares pretty decent things in this group. But if you come to this group and you're just going to share stuff without comment 
and you think this is another sort of place for you to promote your Instagram page or your Facebook page, I'll say, why don't you grow some balls and spend some money on advertising if you think people are, if, if, you know, why do you think this place is worth more than your money? Okay, so don't, you see how much time I give free? I don't guarantee feedback. Real Animator Training Library is a standalone learning course, but I give my time to my members because I care. Every week I try to give them feedback. See, I put a lot of time, effort, and love in this group. I'm not going to tolerate spam and junk posted on the wall. Um, you know, so you're most welcome to join. You see, other people like Saif Khatri um, and the other person, they're not Real Animator Training Library members, but I even gave them feedback because they look like they care they look like they're trying to they, they look like they're trying to really genuinely learn so i'll try to genuinely help them i don't care who you are if you appear real to me genuine to me i'll help you but if you post like whatever on the wall that doesn't look like it belongs in this group and it just looks like you're trying to do some cheap self promotion and it's such a cheapskate that you and you don't believe in your work to pay for an advertising campaign then get out, you know, it ain't gonna appear on the wall and I will just remove you and block you without even telling you, first time. First, there ain't no first mistake, that's it. This is like one of those video games where you only get one life, okay? So I'm gonna make it very clear, okay? And now I see I've kind of lost a lot of audience members, so hopefully those kind of people have gone, okay? Bye-bye. Right, so now I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna tell you the power of this group is if you go to the announcements um, and you come down here, you can have access to nine free training libraries. So you click on this password, you copy it, you click on this link at the bottom here, you take into this closed showcase, you paste that in there, and here you have free access to nine free lectures from various archives of the Real Animator Training Library. So, um, so there we go. Okay, so enjoy. Uh, right, I'm going to come online, just say a few uh, chats to a few people. Um, and yeah. Okay, we got the double mic, so I can quickly do it one more time. Tiger, tiger, uppercut, yoga, yoga, fire, yoga, flame, flame, fuck, fuck, fire, fire, flame, flame, tiger, tiger, tiger. Uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm never going to get tired of that. Uh, right. Um, let me go back to and see what people have been saying. Right then, what have we got? We have got people just catching up. I thought it was a video. Alessandi Rojas, how are you? Unbiased opinion of myself process. Okay, right. Now we are back to where we were, so I can cover any questions for those who missed out. Um, I love the way Hung Ming Hui's line work looks. You and me both. Um, how are you doing? Uh, Camp Studio Labs. Um, it did look like the pelvis model and it is slightly slanted smaller on one upside okay fine awesome you got your feedback thanks for the advice i will start doing more micros along with macros yet i had no idea it compressed like that i have to fix that okay that was amberly um okay just looking down here to see if there's any questions i might have missed any good questions um after the stream, I'm going to study some milk. That's it. Good for you. Uh, nobody cares about you. Here's the thing. What makes you think nobody cares about you? If somebody replies to you, nobody cares about you. Well, let's look at what you did. Here's perspective. I don't know. But my point to you is... Um, Care about yourself first, and then, you know, miraculously, other people will care about you. 
and you won't worry about it because you'll be too busy caring about yourself. Um, you see, it's a flawed perspective to say you're self-centered. Self-centered from a selfish, careless, heartless, you know, that's got a lot of other things put into it, point of view is a different argument entirely. But everything, everything in this world, this whole world, is you, is you, is your self-experience of it. The only thing anything matters is because of yourself. The only thing, you know, world peace may, may, may as well not exist if you was dead. But you're not dead. You're alive. So world peace is important to you, if it is, if it indeed it is. Maybe it's not, and that's not. I, I couldn't care less. You know, I'm not judging you. Everybody's got a, their own idea of what's important and what's not important. But the, my point is, is it's from your personal self perspective. Perspective. So care about yourself first. Care about your work. Care about your opinions, and then magic will happen. And Others will care about you, and you won't be too bothered whether they do or whether they don't. Um, animation maker, just keep posting your animation at your own pace. Okay, Travis. Uh, Travis, the insert animate. He's online. There he is. That was an amazing test Travis put on Twitter, by the way, of his film. You're really coming together, Travis. I'm so happy for you. Looking great. Um, Yes, it was from some drawings of a scene. I'll be more careful with the lines. Um, okay, I am a one-hand player. Please support my YouTube channel. Okay, well, you've had your opportunity. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing for anybody looking for... There's no problem. I have no problem with you. Asking for support on my page, that's fine. But here's the thing. If you really want support and you really want other people to support in what you're doing, then you've got to believe in what you're doing. Now, I've got this thing, it's called put your money where your heart is, not your money where your mouth is. If you say, I believe in what I'm doing, and I, then you go and spend some money in some empty words, then you've thrown the money away. But if you really want people to support your cause, then you've got to invest in your cause. And there's nothing better to invest in your cause than with your heart, in your heart of hearts, with your feeling. And once you invest in something with your heart of hearts, money is second. I've told you, I've spent over a thousand pounds a day on Facebook ads for real. A thousand pounds a day is more than a thousand dollars a day. Okay, I don't know the exchange rate, US dollars, English pounds we're talking. Spent more than a thousand pounds a day on Facebook ads promoting the Real Animator Training Library. Now, I didn't just make ads and then without learning how to do it first. But my point is, is, is like, how much do you believe? Before anybody, now I'm not just talking directly to the one-handed person. That's how you've identified yourself. Uh, you could be so much more, but I'm just going by your words, okay? Um, this is out, out to everybody. How much, before you go crying that no one's supporting you or no one cares, You've got to ask yourself, how much do you care? What have you really done to garner the support that you feel you deserve? What have you done? What efforts have you made to put it out there? You use the free social media device that you probably spend most of your time bitching about because of the politics on it or because of the algorithm or whatever. But you have this free platform for you to do that. You know, it's called perspective, my friends. So 
why should you stand out in all the noise? Well, because you believe you should. All right, then. So then, then, then you need to back that belief up with some action. How about by putting your money where your heart is? And saying, well, I think this is no, I think I don't think I know I'm the one of the best animation instructors in the world today. I know there's very few people alive on this earth that can do what I do the way I do it. As fast as I do it, as in depth as I do it, to the way that I do it. I know it. I don't care who tells me otherwise, I know it. And I'll put my money where my mouth is and my heart. But more, more importantly, where my heart is. Which is why I will do crazy things, like spend a grand a day. They say never spend your own money, spend other people's money. Well, that's true. But when passion's involved, it's like you know what? What would happen? Would it? What would it do to my business if I was to spend a grand a day for a couple of weeks on on this uh, on promoting? my training library on this platform what would i learn what would i get from that to put back into my business you say well i don't have a grand today well you must have something what about the amount of money you spend on subscription services to netflix or games video games or going to see movies Add all that up, put it in a bank account, save it that, make that your marketing budget for your artwork. What's it got to do? You know, uh, there's always stuff, oh, well, that wouldn't work. Well, let me tell you, what you're doing now, work, that wouldn't work a lot more. So it ain't just about spending money on ads, but I like to use that because it cuts to the chase it makes you put your money where your heart is it makes you it makes you really think about how much do you believe in what you say how much how much passion how much true genuine feeling is behind your words about your work where does it come from so it's so easy to to feel sorry for yourself to cry and whinge and think the whole world is against you. But then take a good look in the mirror and ask you, what have you done? There's so many things that I can be pissed off about. So many things. But I always know the answer is me. Many times, you see, I've got the money sorted out. People join my library. I don't have a problem. I, I turned down jobs from the industry just earlier this month or maybe last month. I was offered a job to be a lead head of story for a studio in Montreal, Canada. I would have to move to Canada. They were setting up a new company. Turn that down. Turn down two other storyboard jobs. I'm happy doing this. I don't need to worry about that. But I still get miserable sometimes about the lack of engagement on my YouTube and on my Instagram and all that. Sometimes I think, man, and I, it's so easy to fall into that pity party. Because I think, well, my work's better than his work. My work's better than that work. Well, there's, there's something wrong in here. But that's all bullshit. What have I done? Nobody wants to see my wife. I want to see my wife. I draw my wife. If I, all I would do is just change that, Draw some frozen characters, draw some, animate some frozen characters, go and jump in the fan art thing, play the whole October, October thing. I would suddenly ramp up my engagement. It's my fault. My fault. No one else's. No one else's. So whenever you point the finger, you make sure that thumb's pointing right back at you. Because that's the truth of it. That's the truth of it. The answer always comes back to you. You can either be a to-me person, a by-me person, a through-me person, or an as-me person. Never be a to-me person. Never. 
That just makes you a victim. By default, everything's happening to you. You have no power. You're a victim of circumstance. You can become a by me person is a little bit better. Yeah, that was done by me. That was done by me. I did all of that. But then, you know, also the bad is done by me. Okay? Or you can be a through me person, which is even better. I love being a through me person. I'm not a through me person on YouTube or Instagram. As I said, that, that's, I'm, I'm a by me person there because if I want more engagement, I, I'm, not, I'm not really giving people what they want to see. I'm drawing pictures of my wife and making my own little red thing and whatever for myself. But that makes me happy because in the end of the day, I'd much rather be happy than drawing Frozen and all that fucked over shit, which I really couldn't stand. So the through me is, is look at what's happening. Look at all these people getting much better at animation through my training. And then the other people are seeing what they're doing and they're getting better at animation. It isn't about them coming to me to learn from me anymore. It's about a bigger, like a ripple in a pond and a wave going out there. And it's all happening through through me, not just through the real them coming to the real animator training library. Even if somebody doesn't join the training library, people are getting ideas like Safe Katri or whatever, trying things and trying to implement it into their work. It's all done through me. That's the next level up. Fantastic. And I don't want to talk about as me. As me is a whole load of metaphysical stuff, which is going to blow a lot of people's brains out. I would suggest you listen to some lectures by Alan Watts if you want to understand the concept of ASME. Um, they're, they're free on YouTube, and um, I highly recommend them. But that's my little bit of advice to anybody out there looking for people to support their work or looking to grow and improve their work. Point the finger if you must. Sometimes pointing the finger is a worthy thing to do. But just remember, when you do so, keep that thumb extended firmly out so you can ask yourself what you're pointing your finger at. Right. Um, I recalled AMB's words before doing it. This is the bitch of the basics. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is the bitch of the basics archive. Charlene, there she is. Um... I like how AMB is focused on the flashlight. It reminds me of the lesson where Bob said to take the... Hey, I love the, uh, the this completely different lesson. Um, but I love the story about the elderly couple, mate. I love that story about the elderly couple. The elderly couple doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> how can we send you an animation for you to give feedback? Well, it's not guaranteed. As I said, you join this group. I always prioritize training library members and I only really give feedback on people who I think are genuinely looking to take advice. So I look at the comments. If you're not a training library member and you like and, and you just want to post your anime fight and then somebody gives you a really constructive suggestion, which isn't. Some people just say, just follow AMB's free lectures. They're doing me a favor. I'm grateful for that. That's not necessarily advice that you specifically want. And I can understand that. But if somebody will tell you that you need to understand your arcing is fundamentally flawed and you maybe need to slow down and look at a bouncing ball and thing like that, and you just give like an answer like, yeah, yeah, I'll think about that. Thanks. Then I'll know that you're not really interested. You just you're just looking for feedback of all the time and effort of the thing that you've put in there. But here's how life works. OK, if you're going to go to a pro. Or an expert or a group of people who are learning from that expert. And they're going to give you some some words of wisdom and you're going to like kind of like fob it off because you just want it's me, 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 then most likely you're not going to get feedback. So but you're more than welcome to join this group. Bond, join. OK, yes. Um. Yeah, there you go. See, he won't see the animation I made right now. Okay. Well, anyway, you got to make a start. 
you know, getting out of the comfort zone is what life is all about. Um, I remember Merlin's Isle. Okay, I remember that comment. Anil Burns, how are you? I got your message, Anil. I don't, it's difficult for me to respond to uh, personal messages in my email. So if you want to really reach out to me where I can, I take some time out to respond to all the personal messages, all of these different platforms, then the Facebook group is a great place to do it because I take some time out to really focus on that. But I'm so glad that uh, you're enjoying the training. Uh, fantastic, Anil. And Lil, it's just amazing. Awesome. That was a really, really fulfilling email that just to read that from you. It's just three lines or four lines. Where it's very fulfilling to me that I love it. I love the fact that people pay me for this and then they love what they paid for. That's what the most important aspect is. Um, Maharshi Gautam. Mm, Okay. About the end, Michael Elliott with his jokes. This never gets old. The double mic wasn't on. Oh man, the double mic wasn't on. Damn it. I despise Mortal Kombat Mage. I don't even want to say the word. Uh, okay. Um, mute mini reanimations. Um, he talks about he talks about having principles. Aaron A O X, hey Aaron A O X, you missed my drawing that I did it specially for you about the guy wanting to wear black belts. <laughs> um, before you speak, it's heard, which is why money should go where the feeling is. That's right. Um, I don't like frozen either, Midori. Um, you're not the oddball. You're intelligent. Um, there you go. Loads of people proving you're not the oddball. Um, Bumblebee has backed that up. It's been about three months since you last mentioned the do by through concept and the as concept. I think it can take a few more jabs at guessing what as me, but I still want to know. Okay. Also, yes, I love the concept of plugging the bigger bulb. Yes, I've done animation up to the pendulum. I will post my videos. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Um, fantastic, Kitchen Cat. Kitchen Cat, you like to listen to me. Watch it again and watch it. What? Watch one piece of it in stages. Okay. It's so much more. It's like, it's like if anybody enjoys the motivational stuff that I talk about, he does it ten thousand times better than me. Okay. And I'm 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 the I'm the the I'm I'm not afraid to to say that at all. Now some of you aren't going to resonate with an old man in glasses, but uh, but yeah, check out that Bob Proctor Born Rich series. Um, I'm not much into his newer stuff, but that old thing from the '80s. Uh, I've never seen a personal development motivational seminar to equal that. It's it's outstanding. It's true that drawing will be improved. It's how to improve. If it is practice, what to practice? I don't know how far you've joined in joined into me on my stream. Okay, I don't just believe in practice. Okay, practice is practice. What what word is practice? What does practice mean? You know, practice is exactly what you say. What to I believe in repetition. Repetition. If you think instead about nature rather than these human concepts like practice, nature is cycles. Winter, spring, summer, fall, okay, waves, frequency waves repeating to f at a fast enough vibration will give you a solid matter or an audible sound. So if you want to be a great artist, a great draftsman, if you want to succeed, then you need to do you need to repeatedly do the right things and that's exactly in a way what your question is but practice is not necessarily repeatedly doing it practice is you know practice is a word which could lead in many other ways okay so if somebody could just anyway i, I think i've made my point i don't want to ramble on too much about that look 
What to practice? It's bloody obvious. Animation has got 12 laws. You can't break those laws. People say laws are there to be broken, not these laws. Go walk off a cliff and say, I broke the law of gravity. You'd have to work with the law of gravity and build an aeroplane, work with the law, not break it in order to go against it. You cannot break these 12 laws of animation. If you want to go outside of them, work with them, understand them, work with them. These laws cannot be broken. Practice those 12 laws. 12 fundamental laws. Now, if you want to get better at drawing, what do you want to draw? Everything has a structure. You don't want to learn anatomy, then learn structure. If you don't just want to draw people, you want to draw perspective, you're going to learn about structure. Structure exists within perspective. It's not hard. It's common sense. It really is common sense. Okay, my drawing is worse. Can I improve it? Of course you can. Why? It's not worse. It's worse because you, 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 what you're doing right now is, is you're just thinking. Don't retract your question. I'm helping you. Please don't feel ashamed. You're asking the right things. Look, this isn't... I hate... I love the time we live in now, but I hate the times we live in now. Why should you feel that you should delete that comment? That was a beautiful comment. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Asking questions is what gets you answered. And I love, that's exactly why I'm here to help you. You've done nothing wrong. You don't feel the need. Just because I'm talking to you like this, I'm talking to you with passion, with passion because I care about you. I'm not talking to you as if you're stupid. No way, man. No way. Never. Okay? The, the point here is, is, is see, I, I forgot what you said there. My drawing is worse. How can I improve it? You're focusing on worse. And no matter what you do to improve it, if you keep focusing on worse, it's like I'm looking here and the way out is there. And I keep going, how can I get out? How can I get out? And you go, just turn your fucking head, man. How can I get out? I can't see a way out. I can't. What can I do? Oh, oh, I'll go there. Oh, and somebody says, look, go over there. Now you go over there, but then somebody's making a noise back there. You go, oh, yeah. oh, how can I get out? I tried that way, but, it, I, you know, how, how can I get out? You're not focusing on the right thing. And even when you do, you get distracted, so you haven't gone that way enough to get there. So if you keep saying, I'm worst, I'm worst, how can I improve, or it ain't happening for me, I'm not getting good fast enough, it's all negative. Negative, 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 negative. And you'll never get to the positive unless you flip the switch. And you say, all right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to improve. Somebody says, have you improved yet? Yeah, I've improved. I've improved. I can do stuff that I couldn't do last week. Are you where you want to be yet? I'm going there. I'm getting there. Are you where you want to be yet? Of course I'm not. That's, so why are you asking me that question? Because you want to antagonize me? Because you want to break me down? Fuck off. You're never going to do that. I've improved. And if I keep doing what I'm going to do, I'm going to get there. And ain't nobody going to stop me. Plain and simple. That's what it is. The only person who can stop you is yourself. The only person who can stop you is giving up because you're watching at what other people are doing and you're putting unnecessary pressures on yourself because you think you should be getting there because it doesn't feel very, very good where you are now. The fact of the matter is, Understand that that's where you're going to be, that's where you are, and that's where you're going to be, because you're there in your mind. If you're there in your mind first, the body has to follow. And you have not, you cannot let your, your mind shift to where your body 
presently is. Because you hear all this at the moment. Right now, all this. My daughter and all her friends are getting into the law of attraction. And I'm happy because I've been telling my daughter to read The Secret. Even though I don't even rate that book. I think it's a kiddie's book. But it's good for a kid. So when she was 10, I was telling her, read The Secret. I'm not reading that. My wife, leave her alone. But like it's fashionable now. It's fashionable. That's why they're getting into it. But let me tell you this about the law of attraction. You hear all this thing about the present moment. Now listen up, because people will charge money for these seminars and they're an absolute con. And I'm going to give you the clue right now to what it all means. You hear about all this. Be in the present moment if you have to be in the power of now and you just think about the present moment and, and, you, and you're looking and you're in the present. It doesn't make any sense. It's all, it's all, the stranger secret is amazing, mage. Don't even mention it in the same, uh, same thing as the secret. But anyway, the present moment is where you presently are now. And this is where all the gurus and all those law of attraction people really try to complicate this and make it seem like it's all meditation to get you. Let me just break it down for you as to how bloody simple it all is. Where are you right now in this present moment? If your answer is, my body is sitting in my room here and I'm watching this AMB live stream, that's not good enough. Why are you watching this live stream? Do you have somewhere you want to go? Is this leading to anything? Oh, I want to be an animator. Where are you right now as an animator? I'm a newbie. I'm a beginner. I'm not good enough. That's where you are in the present moment. Whatever your mind thinks, not your body. You could be somebody who is in a job right now, and this is the perfect time to talk about this, working in the industry. So they're a full-fledged professional animator, but they're fucking shit. They can't draw. They can't animate. They depend on the software. They don't know jack shit. They're hopeless. And they know it. Because when they look at their work, they don't feel good. The present moment doesn't mean where your body is. It means where your mind is. Where is your mind presently when it comes to yourself as a draftsman, as an artist, as an animator? As a, as a physical specimen, if you might want to add that. How do you see yourself? Because I tell you what, if your mind sees yourself a certain way, and it is that such a strong bind that it cannot be broken, your body has no way to get there. Your body has not, sorry, your, I just got distracted by the comment. Your body has nothing else to do other than to get to where your mind is. Because that's where you see, that's where you firmly see yourself. If you say, I'm going to go and I'm going to get myself some socks from some, some, some shop today and you know you need some socks because your feet are stinking and they're cold and you wash them and now they're cold or whatever and you desperately need some socks even if it's in the dead of the night and you all your socks are ripped you will go on amazon you will go whatever and you will have some socks because something as trivial as that your mind instantly and automatically made your body carry out that instruction but when it comes to something like drawing where you where you need to have patience you need to see the physical, you need to watch the results. You need to, you need to basically see how you're doing. 
that's what kind of distracts your mind. You kind of look at the way that you're drawing and you kind of say, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not good enough. I tried. The pain, the pain of it all. I put in so much hard work. I put in so much effort and it's just not happening. Nobody likes my work. Nobody, nobody patted me on the back, on the head. Good little boy. Isn't it a wonderful little drawing you've done? <laughs> Nonsense shit. Nobody said that to me. Boo hoo hoo. Wow, wow, wow. I'm not where I want to be. And then your mind slowly changes its vibration. And it no longer is vibrating as this ultimate badass who's going to be where it needs to be. So then your body is kind of in limbo. It was on the way to greatness. And now it's on the way to being average. And then soon it'll go down to being absolute shit. Okay. That's basically what it is. That's basically how it is. Now, is it hard to maintain the mind and belief for some more so than others? Because ultimately, that's what the challenge is. How strongly do you believe that you're going to accomplish what you're going to do? How badly do you want it? And that's why many people say you need a burning desire. Desire isn't enough. Desire fades. Burning desire, where it's like a life or death, this is my this is what I have to do. That that's when it kind of like gets to the point which is you kind of know in your in your heart of hearts you're guaranteed success. You're guaranteed success. Because you don't care about how long it takes you to get there. You don't care about what other people say. You truly don't care. Maybe sometimes you'll be on a good day and a bad day. We all have this. Somebody will say the wrong thing, somebody, and it'll get to you. But ultimately, in the bigger picture, the long-term picture, you don't care. That's what it's all about. So that's how to make sure that you improve. Because a lot of people, okay, I sell courses that teach you technical skills. But let me tell you here, right, right here and now, that a lot of people, I give you a one-time purchase. Maybe that'll change, okay? I've been told, but it's not good business sense. You need reoccurring income, but I don't do that. Many people out there have reoccurring income, and they keep selling you the same thing over and over again. Do you know why? Because they understand that this is the secret. They understand that it's not about the technical ability and technical skill. Technical ability and technical skill is very, very important, but that's only about like 1% or 5, 1% to 5% of it. A very important finishing piece of the puzzle. Don't let me, don't, don't, let's not undermine it. You need technical ability and skill. But the majority of what makes that technically and technical ability and skill come into place is all about your mindset. And if you're constantly looking for a reason to improve because you, you know, your mind isn't there, you're going to keep handing over money to these people. Teach me, please, teach me what others couldn't. That's all it is. That's why there's such a big business out of the personal development industry, the, the art industry, the fitness industry, reoccurring memberships at gyms, all these things personal trainers because the mind doesn't truly belong to you right um mm -mm. alexandra ayala yeah you're too late for feedbacks today if all you're interested in is, is, is in the feedback here and now you ain't gonna get it okay um i give feedback streams once a week to the people who post in that group and and I got to get a I get a flavor for the kind of people in the group are there people who are going to stay in the group are there people who are going to hang around or if they're just going to come for some one time feedback hint 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 nudge 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 you call me crazy huh um maybe I won't bother uh wait the secret okay um is it weird to answer my where I am as an animator is pretty good? No. No. That's a positive. Okay. 
that's that you know that's a positive you can work on that you know you're still relying a lot on uh on, on uh, physical evidence, which is important, you know, it's not that easy to make that switch. It's not like I, am I fully there now? Time will tell. It's not like I, you know, who knows? I could be talking all this, preaching all this stuff to you, practicing it is a completely different matter, but at least that's a positive, you know? Um, my phone, okay. My answer as animator is I need to be a good draftsman. Um, well, um, not necessarily because animators don't always draw. Um, but it's important. I'm not going to say it isn't. But you don't need to be a good draftsman first. That's absolute bullshit. There, look, there's this way and there's this way. You take whichever way you want, you're going to have to take them both at some point. They'll both get you to that. They're both vital to get you to where you want to be. The order in which you do them really doesn't matter. Um, you're great. Why did Mayfly delete her comment? As long as you're aware, it matters. I keep having clips of blob, Bob. <laughs> because you know what, Mage? You probably know I got a lot of this from Bob. Nobody does it better than Bob. I tell you what. Well, better than Bob in the 80s. Mayfly, I say, knowing is the start. Changing it is a skill, just like animating or riding a bicycle. It can be learned. You just need to know where to get the right information. Absolutely. Okay, and on that matter, I'm going to end this now it's been a pretty awesome stream um i gave you a good three hours because i've been busy all week doing some um doing some back-end real animator training stuff um i'm making sure that the real animator training library is secure um and i'm ma making you know ma just just securing certain aspects of the training library it's going to take some time um, I'm looking to stream next week. Maybe I might not, but I will be here for the review stream. But I mean, getting back to the usual AMB cycle of doing live streams during the week, ask AMB, a couple of lectures for the library, whatnot, all those kind of things. Um, we will be returning to that as soon as I've um, done this back end work that needs to be done um life fantasy there you are so nice to have a goodbye from you um uh au revoir eric bonsoir mon ami uh enlil burns bye bye um okay see you later punch punch thank you for contributing on my streams i don't know if I know you or not, I think this is the first time I'm engaging with you on my streams. Boss Null, see you later. Kitchikat, Dylan Draws, Charlene, and Frill Mayfly. Um, awesome. Okay, I'm going to go have myself some... Uh, Maharshi will know what I'm going to have. I'm going to have some dal chaval, which is just rice with the lentils. And maybe I'll put a tin of fish in there as well. Um, Okay. Awesome. Pound, pound. Okay, well, then you'll know the score in the group, so you've got nothing to worry about. Adios. I've got to rewatch. Aaron, you just watched the point about the person, the, the fat guy wearing somebody else's karate belt. That was the only thing in it for you. <laughs> okay. Dal chamo with chips. No, don't, don't, don't you. I'm going to tell my wife what you said, Maharshi. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right, on that note, see you later, people. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I thought I was weird. Okay, mixing fish with it. He mixes chips with it. Okay, bye. See you later. <laughs>